So, Arthur. Really? <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> All right, go ahead. Keep going. So, Arthur. Okay, yeah. What's So, Zach. Is that what you wanted? That's exactly that. Yeah, that's exactly what okay. I wanted. All right. <laughs> so, we finally got a chance to watch a new show together. Yes. After so long. It was. I don't remember when the. Uh, I, the last anime episode was Josie, and F before that, it was Your Light in April. And oh my gosh, that was before we even started the podcast. Yes. I think. It was before we started the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's been so long, but yes, I'm glad we finally watched an anime together. Yes, and the anime that we chose, or that you chose, was Rascal Does Not Dream of Bunny Girl Senpai. Oh, you went for the full title. That's crazy. I went for the, you went full, for the full title. The I mean, you had shebang. it there. You had it there, but you went for it before you you had it there, or before you looked. So I respect that. Wait, did I did I mess it up? I what did know. you mess up? The name. No, you got it. Rascal Does Not Dream of Bunny Girl Senpai. I think you got it right. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> All I saw was a Japanese title, and I was like, uh. Oh. <laughs> well, to make it easier, we're going to be calling it Bunny Girl Senpai like everybody else. Yes, but we watched Bunny Girl Senpai for his fourth anime. Fourth, fourth anime, yeah. yes, fourth anime. And it was great. Dude, okay. <laughs> There, there are so many things that I want to talk about with this show, and a lot of it is pretty similar to what we've talked about with the other shows that we've watched together. A lot of like uh, the the character design, with the animation, with the the cinematic uh, style that they went for with this show, and mm -hmm. it is just like it is so. It is so really good. cool. Yeah. Real quick, do you focus me ever? No. All right. I want to do that really quick. Do you want to just, you know, just keep going. I'll, okay. I'll take the ropes. All right. Audio listeners, don't worry about it. <laughs> so Bunny Girl Senpai, uh, I got Zach to watch it and it is, it was such a great show. And I mean, if you guys know about Bunny Girl Senpai, you guys probably already know how great of a show it is because like when it was airing in 2019, I think it was 2019. I can check. I can check. I think it was earlier than that. No, I don't think it was. Oh, it was 2018. Wow. I thought it was 19. So it is a little older than I thought. <clears throat> I'm not old, but older than I had thought. But it, it aired in 2018 in the fall. I remember when it aired. When it when Bunny Girl Senpai aired, it was the thing everybody talked about. Like, like, like Twitter, every time a new episode dropped, Twitter was talking about it. Group chats were talking about it. Discords were talking about it. There were discords and Twitter chats di specifically dedicated for just discussion, you know, like like it's some sort of forum post type of thing where it's like, all right, right. guys, let's or, or, or like a book club type thing. OK, OK, everybody, we've uh, we've gotten to episode two. Let's talk about our feelings, how we think about the characters. You yeah. know, it was I mean, it was so crazy. And like I that being said, I never personally participated in them. Right. Just because I was busy or, well, I mean, I talked about it with my friends, but I never had like a, a discussion discussion or a discussion. What did I say? A discussion discussion. Right. I've never had one of those. So that is going to be this episode. And this is going to be this episode now that I have one, watched this three times. Two times I watched them like kind of back to back-ish. So I don't really count them as rewatches. The third time, kind of like how I mentioned with the Your Lie in April episode, um, I know how it how everything goes, I know how it it's gonna end and all that type of stuff. I already know, you know, basically I know the main things that you were paying attention to initially, so I don't have to pay attention to them. So now I can pay attention to everything else, and that's kind of how why you rewatch stuff, right? Right. Sometimes exactly, you're like, yeah. sometimes you're like, whoa, why would you rewatch a show? You know, it's kind of eh. You know, you already know what's gonna, you already know how it's gonna end. You know who's going. I don't know. You you know X person's gonna die and Y person's going to to betray person Z. You know. You already know that, so why do you rewatch it? You watch it for the same reason why you, if you want to read the manga, you start from chapter one, not where the anime left off. You read it to recapitulate things you missed, things that, um, well, I mean, for manga it's a little different, things that you missed and uh, author's intent and stuff like that. But for a show, you see things that you missed, basically. That's that's a, that's as simple as that. Yeah, things that you missed. Right. You know. And one of my favorite things about this show was <laughs> just. I hit my hand that hurt. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> uh, one of the things that I really enjoyed about this show is that the 
the different arcs that went on throughout the story, not only mm-hmm. did they correlate with each other, but they also were so amazingly done. Like yes. the way that they were able to just, oh, it was just so, so cool to watch. And I didn't notice, and I remember talking to you about this when we were watching the show, the the cr- end credit song that plays. I didn't mm-hmm. realize that the main protagonist for that arc would sing the end yes yes and it took me it took me a really long time to just kind of figure out uh to figure that out and once i figured it out you know it was yeah, i was it like was, whoa <laughs> whoa you know yeah it's yeah cool. the voice act or the well voice actor being a little too meta the characters of of that arc so the heroine main heroine that is uh being used within the adolescent syndrome is singing that song so i guess we should probably explain a little bit about bunny girl senpai if you somehow haven't seen it although there are probably a handful of people who haven't seen it um bunny girl senpai is basically like how do you explain it in like a brief way i can't say it in a brief way i mean i could read the synopsis but that would be stupid so let me try it let me take my hand at it weird things happen so there's this uh that basically weird things happen. There you go. I did it. I did it. There, <laughs> there you go. There we go. There we go. That's it. All right. <laughs> and we'll roll the end credits now. <laughs> so the main antagonist Sakta, um, in uh, oh gosh, <laughs> wrong word. Uh, the main protagonist Sakta, he encounters a wild bunny girl, is how they kind of introduce it, and it's my his senpai in school, um, my Sakurajima, and. She is like a TV actress or an ex at the time, ex TV actress and commercials, all that type of stuff, right? She's like super, she's super popular and stuff. Um, but she has a problem where if it's not, or just people can't see her, like physically, she cannot be seen. Like, right. see people, like her, not even be seen, her existence can't even, like, it's not even acknowledged. Like, if she picks something up, they can't even see it and all that type of stuff, right? So what happens is because of that, she dresses up in a bunny girl suit and walks around because if you see some, if she's like, she will know if someone sees her in a bunny girl suit because, you know, it's kind of pointing out like what, you know, it's an an attention grabber. So she does that suck to seize her. And then from there on, it's all, it's kind of like a, I don't want to call it like a mystery show. It kind of is, but it's not really like a, like a, like a Scooby Dooby Doo type. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's more, there is a mystery aspect. And it is mystery and like mystery solving aspect, but I wouldn't call it like a a mystery show, if you will. But things weird things happen, and it's that type of thing where my Sakurajima can't um, be seen by people, and then other girls like uh, Toga can't or uh, days keep repeating. And we're gonna talk about these um, as I don't. Uh, I mean, we have we have we have a whole episode, so we can probably just go through each one. At least, if if not yeah. for a very long time, then briefly at least. But I will say, Zach, after my rewatch, I have a lot to talk about because, like I said, this is my third time rewatching, and this I've the like I said, the first and the second time I watched them kind of back to back ish, so it didn't really count. The third time, it's been three years now, so I know a lot more. I've watched a lot more anime. I know a lot more about Japanese culture and um, that those type of things like Japanese tripe or tropes and uh, comedic stylings and just basically Japanese pacing or even just the culture first and foremost ties in a bunch because I understand um, some extra things. And, you know, like sometimes I would stop, like I would stop you or I would just explain some things that would be common in Japanese. Um, For example, like when you, whenever they said their names, um, like he's like, God, what was fucking name? Um, Asasagawa is spelled like the Asasagawa um, station or whatever. Yeah. And that's just because, like, there's different ways to kanji of one's name. So that's just how, you know, now if nobody's going to say that in real life, but that's they just did that. I don't know. It's kind of just a, a, a just a kind of not a theme, but it's just what they did for the, with the story. So that's one thing that they did. Um, and then, you know, there's a lot of things like that that help with how. You know the culture works, and especially when we go to Toga. Sorry, I've been talking a lot, but <laughs> no, you're totally fine, dude. You're fine. When when we go into Toga's episode um, about uh, like like the social media and um, social norms, social groups, and that type of stuff, which I love that arc so much. 
Um, it's very indi- like it's very indicative of how it kind of is here as well. But like I said, when like I stopped you and I said, in Japan, it's way more hardcore than that. Right. Like it's way more hardcore and it's pretty yikes. Yeah, and and we talked about briefly the uh, just the kind of social norms that happen in uh, in Eastern schools and all of that kind of stuff, and mm-hmm. about how. You know, if you move to a different school, it's not going to be like, oh, yeah, you know, I'll get accepted into groups and whatever. It's just yeah. like everyone is so tight knit at that point already that it's just kind of like, oh, yeah, you're you're kind of you're, you're fucked. You're <laughs> fucked, dude. Unless you're like some like super outgoing. Per- even then, I don't know. It's 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 hard. And I unfortunately, you know, I can't speak too much on it. I can only speak on opinion on that. Like, I can only speak with outside opinion, you know. Right. I do know it, it. it is a thing, but unfortunately, since I don't experience that, I can't really, well, excuse me, I can't really, I, I don't feel like I have the authority to talk about it as much, but we'll get into that right. when we get into that arc. And I guess, uh, yeah, we'll talk about that. We'll talk we'll about talk that. About, yeah. It's the second arc. You know, yeah. we'll get to it. We'll, we'll get <laughs> there we'll get to eventually. It. Yeah. <laughs> um. So we, I don't think we're going to get into sp- spoilers necessarily. We might say, if we, if we do, we'll mention it, Um. but Overall, I think we're going to speak generally because it's not necessarily like the arcs that I mean, the arcs are interesting, of course, but it's not exactly how it be like the the content of the arc, but it's more of the idea of the arc. That's right. what fascinated us. Yeah. And and the storytelling elements that they used and the uh, the types of real world theories and uh, and scientific philosophies. Yes. Just made it super interesting. And like, mm-hmm. obviously, it was something that wouldn't really happen in the real world per no. se but it, it's something that is based enough on like some actual scientific theories and all of that kind of stuff that it just became really fascinating in the way that they explained why things were happening in that world and uh why the things were happening to those people like that was just super interesting very interesting yeah i agree so uh <clears> hmm <throat> Sorry, right. I need to drink some water. But so, do you want to talk about uh, just the first arc? Let's talk about the first arc, definitely. So okay. the first arc, like I mentioned, so the first arc starts with my the character, uh, the first character that shows up, which ends up being best g- girl in the community. Yeah, her right there is the like the the community the communal the communal number one accepted girl of 2018. <laughs> You know, it's for funny. good reason. It's funny because when you when you were talking about that uh, initially, like before we even started watching the show, and like right when her character was introduced, I was like, okay. And then as the series went on, I was like, okay. And then at the end of the show, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Like, <laughs> I totally understand that now. And why she's a great girlfriend. <laughs> she's the best, dude. Yeah, <laughs> that was that was definitely one of those characters that i was like wow she's fucking cool yeah she's great (laughs) she's fucking great dude so yeah my favorite girl i mean what you know what this is the first anime that i had you watch where there was a bunch of girls the first harem style anime although it's not technically a harem um but i consider it because there's a bunch of girls that like the mc in some way so this is the first time i had you watch one of these Later, after we talk about them all, I'm going to ask you who your favorite is. <laughs> oh, God. This is going to be it. Finally, we're going to see who Zach's best girl is. Although, I don't know if it's going to be best girl of all time so far, but we're going to see his best girl for this series. And then we'll check back after we've seen a couple of animes to see who is his true best girl. Because you can have... Listen, you after this po- at this point, you have to have one. You have to. Well, maybe not at this point. Maybe after a couple more. But you have to have one. Out of all the shows we've watched, you have to have one best girl. But I'll ask you that later. I'll let you think about it. Hmm. Okay. I'll let you think about it. <laughs> you can tell I'm very serious. Okay. Anyways, so the first episode, um, like I mentioned, is uh, Sakura Jima Mai's episode. So Mai, she has an issue where um, she is she cannot be perceived or she just can't be seen. For like the surface, surface level explanation, she can't be seen by people. She's walking around in a bunny girl suit, you know. Tits out. Well, not tits out, but, you know, it's bare chesting, you know. Right. Fishnet stockings. You know, this. that's an eye. You know, you you see that you're like, in the library? 
Yeah. With your dad, you're like, you know, you're you're like, Whoa. you're like, what the hell? <laughs> but nobody sees her, you know. And the reason why she does that, of course, is so she wants. She's looking for that, right? She's looking for that that head turn so that she can see if people can see her. And it, what's really interesting about this arc is the idea of why this arc is a thing. So, another character that gets introduced is Futaba Rio. Great girl. Love her so much. Love her. She's awesome. She's great. I love her so much. And <laughs> if it wasn't my, she would be the best. Girl. I think, okay, <clears throat> the normally choice for best girl is my, and then the in, the intelligent, the the <laughs> <laughs> the cold, the high IQ choice for best girl would be uh, Huta by Rio. Um, and then she is basically like a super science girl who is very... Uh, straightforward and physical. She's a friend of Sakata, who is the MC, um, and she's very straightforward because you know she's into science, you know, and she doesn't believe in this. Oh, I guess we probably should have mentioned the big elephant in the room: adolescent syndrome. Yes, right. That is the number one. I, it's not a real thing. It's more like a theory. Um, but basically, what it is and how it's explained in the show. So the adolescent syndrome is what is causing these uh, weird phenomenons to happen, such as my not being able to be seen, and what it stems from, or what. On this in the show, it's just said it's caused by um, severe stress and uh, mental, uh, well, mental mental stress, right? Just severe stress, right? And exhaustion, and basically what it does is, or I, th- I guess the I don't know if it ever explained it, explained it, but what it ba- what it basically encapsulate is that um, when you are longing for something, something happens to represent that thing that you're longing if you will i guess or i don't know if longing is the right word something that mm, i don't know how to explain it they use the word nagai um which is kind of like like a like a longing or a uh they had they had a better word in the translation um like a like a desire to do yeah kind of like a desire yeah. right or something like that. And it's because they want it so bad, but they're not facing it. Something else is causing or something else is happening so that they can either relive it or live it in the moment or to counter it or to just. Uh, what's the word? Well, oh, I've already thrown three out. I was looking for another one that I, I had that word, but I just lost it. <laughs> um to encounter it in the in the moment or in another being or just to be able to experience it right basically so uh for my you know she what okay hold on. i'm trying to remember it's oh yeah the first arc was kind of a long time ago <laughs> you know it, it's funny remember. that you say that because it wasn't that long it wasn't ago, that long it... ago but it was the very first arc and with buddy goes in by how it works a lot happens yeah a lot happens and a lot can be not forgotten but just kind of like oh shit what was that again you know that type of thing yeah yeah and because we didn't just watch the show we watched the movie as well yes and the movie was a lot the the movie was a lot we'll definitely we'll talk about we'll have its own dedicated segment for the movie because i want to talk about the movie more than anything because it's so cool but anyways the the scientific theory that Futsaba Rio comes up with for Sakajima Mai's... Sorry I, I, sorry, I won't do the full names. I'm sorry. I'm just so used to doing it. <laughs> um, Futaba's, um scientific quantum physics type explanation to justify this adolescent syndrome that Mai's having is the same idea of Schrodinger's cat. I love the way that they use right? this in the yes. show. This example, so if you don't know what Schrodinger's cat is, you probably should have taken a science class. Um, but if not, <laughs> I mean, I really hope so because I didn't, I, I didn't take physics or chemistry. Not that those are physics or chemistry classes, but I missed two vital <laughs> science classes in my high school, and I still know what it is. Although I did take like two behavioral classes in college, but that's besides the point. Anywho, Sh- anywho, I digress. Schrodinger's dong, Schrodinger's cat. Basically, what it is is that. What? Okay, so basically what it is is that there you have a cat. I know, right? Shocker. 
and you have a box. You place a cat in the box, and then you place... Oh, what was the example she has? You place some sort of thing that emits some sort of chemical, and you place another thing that, when reacting to that chemical, it emits a deadly poison every, like, five, four, five or ten minutes or something like that. So basically, you put a cat inside a box, or you put a cat inside a box, you put poison in the box, and you close the box. You leave that box doing its poison shit, you know, and you wait, like, five or ten hours. Is the cat dead or is it alive? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Because you haven't you haven't observed observed <laughs> the observing observation. You haven't observed it whether its existence is is verified or not. So there it's in a it's a sorry, sorry, I'm sorry. It's in a very odd limbo right now of whether it's alive or dead. Now practically or not practically, sorry, logistically, technically, it would be dead, right? Because if you, if, uh, technically, right, the technical thinker is like, there's a poison. Nope, it's going to die. In 10, if it emits poison every 10 minutes in 10 hours, that's a lot of poison. It's just dead, right? That's a technicality. But practicality-wise, you don't know that because you haven't confirmed it. You haven't observed it. You haven't yeah. observed that it is dead yet or alive. So it's neither or, or it's both. And this is something I was talking about in my stream because we, I ended up talking right out, literally right after the episode, I st or after we w watched the movie or whatever, I streamed it and we were talking, we were talking about it. <laughs> and <laughs> it's, it's, the idea is so cool because it's a thing that it doesn't make sense. Technically, it, does. it, it doesn't, but it technically on paper, it doesn't make sense why it would not be dead or alive. Technically it's dead. Right. It has to be dead. Well, but that's the thing. It has to be, right? Right. But you don't know that until you observe it. But, like, the technicality mindset is like, it's dead. There's poison in there. It's dead. But you don't know that. And it's something that you and I get. Because it's something in our brains or in our minds. Because the way that our minds work and how ideas flow in our minds and how theories work in our minds is that a lot of times it just doesn't make sense in the real world, you know? Right. Like, we have dreams and frankly, weird shit happens in the dream, and how you can't even explain it in in real words because it's just way too weird, you know. It's and like like the best analogy. I think I have told you this, but my favorite analogy for it, or uh, or a sim or representation of it rather, is let's say you have an idea in your head, and then you and it's a great idea, fantastic idea for whatever the fuck it is, cook a cooking recipe or a uh, a drawing or whatever. You have a great idea in your head. You you put it you lay it out on paper or if you're cooking on the pan or whatever you lay it out in the physical world with physical means and it turns out super shit and you're like oh that turned out that was that seemed that sounded a lot better in my head right because it was it was a great idea in your head it really was but when you factor in real world things that just can't encapsulate what can happen in the mind? What can happen in your thought in your thought process? It's so much different, and that's why something the idea of like Shodonger's cat. Sorry, I keep saying I like saying Shodonger because I, have a, I watch a YouTuber who calls it Shodonger. <laughs> um, but the, of Shodinger's cat, like it makes sense as to why you, if it's not observed yet, then it could neither be dead or alive or both, right? Right, and I like I like the way that they used it in the show. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of going into a, a different arc, but um, the fact that they had two versions of the same person, but they didn't know of each other's existence. And until one of them observed the other, then they would never know about it mm -hmm. unless like someone observed it, unless someone knew like, hey, there are two versions of this one person, like they would never know. And that's the craziest part. And that that's what made it really, really cool, especially. Um, yeah, that was during Futsaba's arc because she had yeah. an arc as well. Yeah. And her, her arc is really great. Her, okay. her arc is really great. All of the arcs are really good. <laughs> yes, and, this is a great show, Zach. <laughs> it's just a great show. <laughs> yeah. And and the fact that they use the, the three episode arcs to use as like momentum for the show, I think that that was really, really cool. Um, and also... The fact that all of the different arcs had some type of correlation with each other. I thought yes. that that was so, so cool. Mm -hmm. Just because there were so many crazy things happening throughout the, the course of the show. But they all somehow tied in together. 
Right. And that was with um, adolescent syndrome. Mm-hmm. And that was so, so cool. And it's so funny because I was talking to my dad about this show. <laughs> yeah, you were. <laughs> and, That's so uh, funny. You know, my my dad has ne- like the only reason why he even watched Dragon Ball Z is because we did. Uh, right, right. And so, like, you know, he he doesn't know very much about about anime or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And so I was sitting there talking to him about it. And then we started talking about, like, quantum entanglement and Schrodinger's cat and just like a a whole bunch of this types of stuff. And I explained to him how it was uh, how it was done in the show. And he was like, oh, that's kind of cool. And I was like, yeah, I know. (laughs) And, and, you know, something about that just sounds so wholesome. (laughs) I love that. That's so wholesome. Just a kid and a dad talking about science through anime. (laughs) Something about that's so wholesome. (laughs) It's ironic, but it's so cool. But it is cool because it's a cool concept, you know? Right. If it was just a documentary, then, you know, what makes the difference? It just happens to be an anime. And the same, there you go. I brought it up again, Zach. It's just a drawing. But just because it's just a drawing doesn't mean it can't be cool because it's just the medium. But I'm not going to do that again. I'm not going to go through that again because we've done that for like three episodes. Yes. But I just want you to know that because I was about to go about it again, that's how strongly I feel about it. Now, go and, ahead. Oh. <laughs> 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 I would say that. My favorite thing about this show is that the concepts that they use aren't so far outside the realm of reality. No. And the the ideas that they use to kind of back the the reasoning for why things are happening, you know, like like we've talked about before, like you never know what's gonna happen. Like you, who, you know, it could just fucking happen yeah, one day. Yeah, magic can just happen one day. Just just out of a snap, you know. One day we can I can what like just Fairies and ogres can exist just randomly because why not? You know? Right. Reality says it can't happen, but who's to say that w- one day reality will just snap? And that's that's one of my favorite things about uh, this show is that it seems some, like something that could, not necessarily could happen. But no, what it, could happen? I think so. I think it's something that is so homegrown and realistic that like it really feels like it can happen, and that ha- that also what ties in um, as well as using um, real life uh, theories and stuff like Schrodinger's cat, uh, quantum physics, and quantum entanglement, that type of stuff. Not that I know much about quantum physics, but apparently after you watch the show, you at least have a bachelor's degree in it. <laughs> I mean, that's better than going to community college. <laughs> Yikes! <laughs> Damn. So okay, I I say that when I did go to a community college. Damn. Right? Imagine. Imagine. <laughs> but um, also, like I've, I told you a lot about it, the pacing of the show. Oh, my god! The pacing gosh. of the show, the directing, the voice directing, like it's so casual. It's so normal. It's not it's so, like even like the way that Maya and Sakuta flirt with each other. It's so home. It's like it's so cat. It's not it doesn't seem fabricated. You know, it doesn't like it seem over the top, exaggerated, you know, like what, like a show might do, which is fine. But something about this type of pacing sets it so differently from the norm, you know, because well, the norm is just like, you know, when you're lovey-dovey with your girl, you know, it's just kind of like, it's not always just like super out, you know, it's just super casual sometimes, you know, sometimes yeah. you're just best friends. Right. And you're just, you're just a bantering. I love that. Yeah. You're just bantering. And the same way with how the way he speaks with his friends, uh, Kutsaba and um, Kurimi, which by the way, love Kurimi, best boy I love him. Dude. <laughs> I think I've gave best boy award to like most people, but. If not, best best friend character. If not, although best I best friend, best best friend, yeah, because that is the thing. The best friend character of the main character, that right. is an archetype, which is which you will see a lot in uh, next animes that uh, the next animes that we show up uh, that we end up watching. He is up. He's up there. I will say that there are there are some pretty good ones, but he's up there. Um, but we'll get into why he is. But also, you know, the way that he speaks with Sakata, it's so casual. Right. You know, it's like just the most normal, unexaggerated, just dude talks, you know? Okay. Something that I I feel like a lot of people don't really realize is how difficult it is to make a conversation written in a script sound organic and natural. Mm-hmm. And that is something that this show did fantastically well. Whether it was the boyfriend girlfriend banter or Sakuta talking to his best friend and just kind of shooting the shit, talking about whatever, 
it, it was just it just felt so normal like we were just listening in on a conversation between two people and that's what gets you really invested and really encapsulated into the story that they're trying to tell because when they're just sitting there having a casual conversation and then they bring up some stuff that doesn't really sound like it could happen but it could it, mm-hmm. at some point you know it, it's just it just makes it so fascinating and it makes it so cool and i really love this show like <laughs> dude okay i'm right. would I, you say this is your favorite show out of all the ones we've watched so far i would say if it isn't my favorite, it is very, very close. Gotcha. Because to be fair, we've only seen four, so you know the bar is it's, it's kind of tough to rank them. You know. Yeah, yeah, and also, the last show that we watched was Your Lie in April. Right. So Actually, technically, the last one we watched was No Game No Life because we watched Your Lie in April for your second one. Oh. You're although so we right. although we we reversed Your Lie in April and the No Game No Life episode because we wanted the Your Lie in April episode to be the, the, the episode the, the episode five special or whatever we said. Um, but yeah, I feel like because of how I know you, your line April might be your favorite out of the four. Yeah. Right. Which is understandable. Understandable. Although these, it's hard. This is where it's weird because, you know, we talk about, oh my gosh, so many tangents. I'm sorry. (laughs) No, dude, it's totally fine. I'm here for it. That's like, that's what I expect. (laughs) We talk about how anime is so vast. There's just something for everybody. There's so many different branches of ways you can tell a story. There's different stories themselves. Right. There's different tropes. There's different pacings. There's so many different things that you really can't compare one show to another. So when you have your rankings, it's not like which show is objectively better. It's just a show, which show did you like more? And when you have your top five or top ten, it, show, it really shows like how like your taste in anime. Right. Your taste in, or not even just in anime, you're just your taste in the stylistic or the stylistic decisions that a show might have, you know, or what type of show it is. A drama, a, 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 an action, you know? Right. And even, but the thing is, you can have dramas and actions in that top five, you know? So it's like, it's like saying, what's your favorite fruit? You know? Right. Yeah. Or what, <laughs> what is your favorite food? You know? Rank them. And they, on the, I could bet you the top top ten are going to be vastly different, right? You know, it'd be like, you know, uh, pasta for your first food, and then it would be like barbecue chicken for your first food, and then it would be like soup, pho or something for your third best food. How do you compare those two? Right, you don't compare them because they're so different. But then someone else can have three very different things, and then you can ver- you can tell very quickly the type of person, or the type of anime watcher you are by that top ten, and that's what I find so interesting because they're so different. The way that like each show is just I don't know. I I, I just get upset when uh, <laughs> people are like oh my top my top ten anime are, and then they just proceed to list the top the mainstream top 10 anime that everybody just likes and then you're like wow you just you must be fucking boring huh yeah (laughs) yeah and i'm i'm really glad that we were able to go on this journey where it's not just a bunch of random or like the normie i mean we're gonna watch the normie show okay that's next we're next (laughs) i mean i I did the opposite i made you watch the normie show last (laughs) yeah yeah but after five shows but yeah i know what you mean but it's just like we were able to appreciate the shows for a different reason Mm -hmm. and it's not because of their uh financial success or their blockbuster rating or Mm -hmm. anything like that it was based on the 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 story that they were trying to tell and how they told it and every single time we sit down and talk about an anime it's like we talk about stuff that no one gives a shit about Mm -hmm. like the the animation we talk about the uh like the music Oh my god, the music is so fucking good. Every single time an episode ended of Bunny Girl Senpai, I was oh, like, yeah. <laughs> still a bop. And still I just- a bop. <laughs> it's so great, bro. That swing, bro. The swing is fun. <laughs> but I don't know what you mean. Like, it's a, there's, there's an infinite amount of cakes you can slice, you know? Right. But each slice is different. It's a different cake. Right. It's a different flavor of, flavor of cake? Yeah. Different type of cake. 
flavor of cake. Different type of flavor. Different type of cake flavor. Yes. So, <laughs> so, so anyways, anyway. <laughs> going, going back to the arcs. Uh, yeah. Um, it was, oh my gosh, dude. Let's go to the arc. second one, I think. Um, Wait, what was this? What was this? The second, second one was the Tolga arc. Oh, that's Tolga right. Tolga. Now, I'm going to, after my rewatch of three years, I would like to say this right now. She is my favorite girl. I love her so much. I love her so much. <laughs> I love her character. I love her energy. Um, the voice actor Toyama now who voices her, who voices all those type of characters usually, like that super energetic girl. So her voice is so perfect. I love her voice for it. And at the at a to a point where you'll recognize it and you'll be like, oh, that's so perfect. I'm glad you got I'm glad I'm glad you got her for this character. But anyways, I love her character and I love this arc. Probably my second favorite arc, just because of the idea of it, because I feel so strongly about it. The right. idea of <clears throat> excuse me. The idea, the the idea. Oh God! Let me drink of water. The the idea, uh, uh, the idea of this arc was really cool, and the high school social yeah. media social construct. We talk. We I think it was last episode. No, was it? I don't know. I think it was because I remember. No, it was a Josie episode, which I might. I think it was the last episode because we talked about Josie, and then we tangent into high school social hierarchy. <laughs> dude i love how that's the way that our episodes end up and like i love i love seeing the clips too because they're like if you just pull one part of the conversation out of context it just you have no idea what the yeah. fuck we started the episode dude, on i have no clue what the title of these episodes <laughs> like i have to just pick one you know like i remember for the episode six it was, it was like we talked about like we do we talked about social media and stuff we also talked about marketing and we talked about like uh uh, uh we talked about like um uh, oh yeah, sorry, I, I missed a big one. Cultural or a uh, cancel culture, mm -hmm. and I was like, "Shit, what do I call this?" So I just called it "social media is weird" because I felt like that was a way to tie it all together. Um, but I like, you know, I don't know. That's what that's what that's what's fun about this show, I guess. I don't know, just or the uh, or our show rather, just talk about whatever. You know, it's not just about anime. We're not here to talk about break. We're not we're not a a show breakdown channel you know right we're not here to break down shows in a way well, i mean we kind of are but not in that not in the way that you think we're not some like easter egg type of let well, I me mean, kind of we're all we're all rounder yeah i don't know if we said this in a little while but this is not a new show i don't think we've ever said that ever have we never said that? i don't think we've ever said that ever well i should probably let you guys know that this is not a new show this is not a new show but anyways let's get into the second arc the uh, second arc that oh my gosh dude the koga arc was Toga. Toga? Wait, is it Koga? Oh, it is Koga. My bad. Koga? My bad. Tomoe Koga. My bad. My bad. I've Toga. been saying Toga. Toga! <laughs> uh, <laughs> that arc was so cool because it, it brought up the idea of going through the same day over and over yes. and over again. So, and, and yeah, so the, in this arc, we should probably explain the, the what happens in this uh, scenario of adolescent syndrome. Um, basically, what happens is the days keep repeating. And Sakata repeats with them, and he has to find who I think. Oh, I forget what it's called. It's like the Lapras Demon or something like that. Um, where basically the idea is that you keep rolling a dice, like whoever the demon is, which ends up being Koga, whoever the demon is, you're just rolling the dice until they get the number that they want before they proceed to the next day, basically, right? Um, Oh my gosh, dude. I have so oh my gosh. There's a lot of little things in this arc that I really love. So I, I can't wait to get into them. But basically, the, I the idea that Futaba comes up with is basically like there are predetermined futures. Like you can you can cause a future to happen. And the cool example that she had, she had like three balls. And she lined them up accordingly. And then she flicked the ball to hit one ball and then hit the next. You know? Right. She knew it was going to hit the last ball. Even though she didn't even flick the ball to the last ball. You know? Like, like it's like pool, you know. Yeah. Like you, you hit the ball to the side, and then it ricochets off shit, hits balls and combos into other balls, and goes into the pocket. You know. Right. There's, I mean, obviously it takes skill, but um, that that's the example that she used to explain predetermined or uh, uh, um, being able to create a future. You know, to choose which future you want, and that's the same idea. And, and she also brought up the dice as well, right? You just keep rolling the dice and rolling the dice until you r meet that. Um, 
you hit that number that you want, you know? And obviously that's not something that happened in real life, but because, you know, we, we're not really technically rolling the dice, but if we could roll the dice and choose when to proceed to the next day, you know, that would be how that goes. Like what outcome will we have to do or what, what decisions we have to do? Like it's the perfect, the perfect way to never make a mistake in your life. Right. Right. And one of the things I keep starting a sentence like that. One of the things, one of the things, (laughs) uh, something that really threw me for a loop was they made it so that we were just as confused as Sakuta was because he would wake up in the morning, see the, see the uh the news the sports channel uh, <laughs> uh <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. and it would just he would see the same news channel and be like he, he would ask his sister he'd be like hey was this on yesterday and she was like no and he's like what the fuck he didn't yeah. say that but <laughs> what is happening what the- <laughs> and, and then he would have he this- just says what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> like what <laughs> just imagine that just <laughs> you're just oh my god that's but so yeah funny. it is really cool but what i want to focus on this arc is not necessarily the time well i, I mean the, the time reversing that stuff is very important but the reason why and it's because of that that social media type thing or because what what koga was so into was keeping up with the with the pace keeping up with everybody keeping up with their friend groups because <clears throat> um Sakata didn't get it you know because he's a fucking chad but what she explained is something that is kind of something that is really happening you know it's like in japanese schools again i'm speaking from outside perspective i'm speaking of what i know but what i know is not first hand experience right you know i'm speaking from what i've heard read and watched right so I'm I I'm not an expert on this, and the frankly for something like this, the number one expert is no professional. It's someone who is in Japanese schools, right? Right. But what is happening is that, like, there's like we talk about cliques and social groups and stuff in our schools. It's like that, but even deeper within, like within the, its cl- its own classrooms. You know, it's so finely construed where if you don't make friends in the first like two days, you're left out. Friend groups are created. They block other friend groups. Like they were talking, like she was talking about, oh, um, I'm part of this group. And then she met like another person in her classroom and then she wanted to help out. But, oh, but you're, you're part of their group and I'm part of this group, you know? And it's a little bit exaggerated, but I don't know. It might, maybe it's not because I do know that they're like, that's how that goes. And in anime, usually it's, it doesn't really depict that. And well, at least in a lot of anime, unless it wants to be meta. But usually if in an anime, they'll talk about like the transfer student that transfers in and then everybody comes in and and accepts them and invites them to shit, you know, that might happen in the first part. But usually what I've heard is that it doesn't happen. You get transferred and then you're just outcasted immediately. Yeah. And and it's hard because like, how what do you what do you how do you invite yourself to another group? You know, like how do you and uh, and the way Japanese are, too, is like they're very not shy uh, there are shy people in comparison to like america right but they're more s- reserved I, I guess yeah reserved reserve yeah. is a great word you know they're not really they they can't unless you're like the the cherry picked super genki super like outgoing character or whatever or or maybe you're just playing that character to be able to do that you know if you're not like that, you're you're just out. You're 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 in the corner of the classroom window seat, you know. Right. So, it would be really interesting to talk to someone who went to school in the east, like in Japan. That would be super. That cool. would be very cool. I don't know how I would. I mean, I'm friends with some Japanese people, but I mean, there's no fucking chance they're coming to fucking Vancouver, Washington to record a podcast. <laughs> Sorry. One day. One, one day. day we'll one day. Happen. One day. One day. But, I can really appreciate the uh, attention to detail that they put into this. And it's it's a, attention to detail of a culture that I'm not super familiar with. Obviously, mm-hmm. I've lived in America my yes. entire life. I'm right. just a, a white dude who just likes watching anime. <laughs> uh, and so being able to get, even if it's exaggerated, it's still kind of high. high Heinz insight why did i say hindsight Hindsight. (laughs) uh get insight into into what that culture looks like and that's really Mm -hmm. cool and also being able to sit down and talk to you because you 
obviously know more about it than I do because yeah. you are my anime Sherpa, as you would. As I would be, yes. Um, and so we are able to just kind of sit down and have those conversations, and it's really cool. And being able to just kind of see uh, in the show what's happening and being able to talk to you about it and be able to like see like wow that's not as exaggerated as exaggerated <laughs> as uh we thought it would initially be yeah i know a lot like there's even in manga too it happens more in manga rather not less in anime because you know the audience is different right um but there are some so there are some mangas that are just strictly based on that like literally just social uh, social letters social construct of high schools there are mangas like multiple like Excuse me, my nose is still really stuffy for some reason. I apologize, but it's not just because I woke up. Um, because it's been a couple hours now. I think I'm just fucking stupid. Anyways, Allergies. Something like that. Basically, like, there are full-length mangas dedicated to this idea of how really serious this issue is in school. You know, in, in Japanese schools, that is. And that's the reason why I believe in it. Because why would they... Like they are see when I read them, I can tell the author's intent. Like they really mean they're not they're in, they're exaggerating it for manga purposes. But as far as like the dialogue goes, it seems like they're very serious about it and they want it to be in a light, you know. And it's cool to see it in, a, in an anime like this, especially in 2018, um, where I mean the, the anime is sure that you know anime still exists that encapsulate that idea. Sure, sure. But a show that can just be talked about by everybody. You know, even in here in the West, you know, right. It's cool to see that type of audience get hit into it. Um, but what Koga was like super into, you know, was like, I need to keep up with my friends. If my friends are talking, I need to be there, you know, and it's like, you know, if I, if my, if, you know, we're in the group chat, nobody sleeps until everybody sleeps, you know, nobody, nobody goes to bed first, you know, and she was talking about when she was on her, um, her date. Oh yeah. I guess I should mention they, they fake dated Sakata and Toga, but you know, it's whatever. Um, <laughs> like she want they she felt somehow obligated to keep up, and she would always pull out her phone, even when she's with Sakta. You know, talking literally just in conversation, pulls out her phone. You know, right. she wants to be in the conversation. She can't be left out because she gets left out. Like uh, she the way the place she came from, she came from like the countryside, right? Um, or um, the way that you would <laughs> describe it in a uh, in Japan would be a bumpkin, <laughs> a, a countryside girl who came to the city. You know. Right. Um, and she was talking and then, you know, she wanted to change herself, you know, and the way that she ended up doing it was the high school girl route, which is to keep up with social norms, dress super pretty, use makeup or whatever. And, you know, all that, all that type of stuff. And <laughs> my favorite part about Sakata is just how realistic and how warped his personality is to, to which his advice is because slight spoiler war more warning, but not really, I wouldn't call it a spoiler warning, but his advice um, when Toga reveals all that, like she was from the countryside, she want she tried, she got her hair done really cute and uh, at at a really fashionable place, and she tried on super fashionable clothes and stuff. And you know, the tr the cliche trope would be the main, main character is like, you know, but that's not you, you know, that's not you, you're not yeah. being yourself or whatever. But Sakta is like, well, who the fuck cares, you know, because that yeah. you are who you are right now. You are you worked hard to be where you are right now. So why? Why say I'm not, you know, you're not who you were, you who you're not who you once were. I mean, <laughs> you know, like uh, some people like say like their favorite YouTubers. Oh, 2000, 2010 YouTuber X was way better. You know, what does that mean? Because they worked so hard to get to where they're at right now. You know, they right. invested money. They invested their time. They have um, they might have employees or they have, you know, they're they're, they're like the, the content creator lifestyle and workload is a very difficult you know right it's a lot of work it's a lot of trial and error and it's a lot of you know it's a it's really just trial and error and how do you have a job that's trial and error when you can just have that one error and then your entire channel is just gone to shit you know it's right. a scary job so it's that idea of just like you worked really hard to get to where you're at right now you know and you're very happy where you are right now so who fucking care who you once were because you are who you are right now. Who cares about the past? Who cares about the future? It is not relevant because the past ends up being the past in a second. And the future ends up, or the past ends up, or the present be, is the past in a second. The future is the present in a second. What matters right. is the present. Right. You can always 
sorry, you can always look back in hindsight, whatever, but you can't do anything about it. It already happened. Right. And in the future, the fu- it's happening right... Oh, here we go. I'm in the future now. Oh, I'm in the future again, you know? Right. Because time is relevant. Right. And I found a really cool quote that said, judging me from my past is like trying to rob my old house. I don't live there anymore. Right. Yes. That's a great, that's a great quote. You and know? I... I'm not going to lie. I found it on Facebook. Uh, 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 and of course I shared it and my mom liked it. Uh, <laughs> but that, that ideology of being who you are now and not worrying about the person that you once were. Mm-hmm. And it's really scary when we're in a, in a state right now where Everyone is trying to dig up a bunch of nasty shit that other people said in the past and just all of that kind of shit. Yeah, we're not going back into it. We're not no, doing it. We're not no, doing no, no. it. But, uh, but I hate it. But I, but yeah, I hate it. Yeah, I hate it too. <laughs> I'm here and I don't like it. Yeah. I the, the Gross. Mm-hmm. It, it just makes yeah. me feel dirty. Yeah. Just to move on though. Just to move on. Because we we've been we've been talking for a while. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because I, we got a lot more because we still have to talk about the movie. And I want to <laughs> talk about the movie the most. Okay. So, so I'm, gonna, I'm just going to wrap it up um, with this really pretty, this really beautiful thing. Um, towards the very end of the arc, kind of spoiler warning, um, but like she, you know, she goes on her final date with Sakta and she gets friend zone finally, or at, at not just friend zone because she was crying like, oh, I want, I'm, I don't know why today keeps repeating every day. The titty just keeps repeating. And at first I was playing along, but now it keeps repeating. I don't want it to repeat. You know, why can't it stay? Or why can't we move on to the next day? I want to move on to the next day. As you know, she has a super dramatic scene and whatnot. And it's super, it's super heartfelt. And honestly, I cried to it first time I watched it. <laughs> but, um, you know, she finally moves on to the next day after confessing and after, you know, being real to herself um, and no longer lying to herself. And then she go all the way back to when it first started repeating. All the yep. way back. And it was so cool. But, um... Uh, during one of her dates, she helped one of her classmates, who I, I mentioned before, was like part of a different group, right? She helped her, or, the, or him, and, or her and Sakata helped her find like a keychain for her, uh, yeah, like a keychain, right, for her phone or whatever, like a yeah. little phone accessory thing. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if you noticed, but at the very end, you know, towards the end, Tomoe uh, was like not really, like she was kind of being outcasted for a friend group because, you know, she was not keeping up. She was with Sakata and, you know, and, you you saw that really really well like in, there would be scenes where literally her her previous friend group was there and they're just leaving her behind and stuff you know right and that's scary right but at the tour the very end it was really pretty um you see her walking by herself being all sad and stuff and then that that girl from that from the beach where she helped her find the keychain that friend group comes and then and then um invites her to be in the friend group friend group and then they they walk home and stuff and then in next episodes that friend group stays Right. You know, it's very pretty. I love that so much. It was very pretty. It was very pretty. And that's one of those details that you may not catch on the first time round. Oh, I didn't catch it until that's then. That's not something Dude, I was I smirking. So I was like, oh, my gosh. Oh, I felt so happy. I felt so happy. I felt so happy. But yeah, I mean, it's to be fair, you know, there, Money Girl's not. Oh, fuck. Hold on. I'm about to make a loud noise with my mic. Wait. Oh, that wasn't that bad. Okay. So much happens in Bunny Girl Senpai. You just can't take it all in. There's so many details. Right. You know, you can't d- take it all in until you give it a rewatch. Which I'm wanting to do. And I want to watch it with someone. Yeah, because watch it. It, yeah, it is so good. And uh, the second time around watching any show, and I've watched Erased through again. I've watched. Uh, oh, you have? Yeah. Nice. Um, I've watched. A couple episodes of No Game No Life because one of my friends is getting into it. Nice. Uh, being able to just see those little details and and just kind of remember the uh, the emotions that you felt during that moment and like you know even the the nitty gritty little details that you'll find just just the smallest are, things yeah, you know the smallest things yeah. it makes the most yeah okay the next arc holy fuck we haven't talked about it too long I'm sorry well we'll kind of speed run until we get to the movie but um. The next arc, I don't know if we'll, we'll talk too much about the fourth arc, which is the sister arc, although it is really cool. Um, and it is, 
Uh, I don't know. It is a good lesson too. Fuck, dude. So, what, man? What does two part this? No, I'm just kidding. We're not gonna do that, <laughs> dude. We totally could. We totally could. I mean, I don't. I don't know if uh, we're gonna be able to do a two and a half hour episode. No, today. we got this. We got this. So, this the next arc. I think it's the Futaba arc. I think because I don't think the sister arc happens yet. Because I know that uh, there was one arc that ended up breaking the three episode rule. Yeah, and it I was think this. that that was the because sister this, arc. Yeah, the sister. No, it was Futaba arc too because it was only two episodes and then. Sister arc was two episodes, and then the final arc was three episodes, making it 13 episodes total. I totally thought that it was just one big arc. No. Futaba's arc is very I'm different. Dumb. What do you mean? I'm dumb. I don't know. Question mark? My brain hurts. My question. I'm question marking hard. All right. Um, I love this arc specifically because Futaba is a great girl, and her personality is great, and it's, it's great, and we all just want to root for her, you know? She's trying her best. She's doing like her very, very best, the most she can do. So we're all just rooting for her, you know? It's great. Right. Um, but this is the first time. So like I said, she was not really into this whole... Uh, I would never explain the idea of this, of the of the second arc, which is quantum entanglement. I'll say, I'll say it really briefly, which was... Um, well, I kind of did, right? Because of predetermined futures and yeah. quantum entanglement, which is um, the main idea of why... Well, it's very important that I explain quantum entanglement, though, because it plays a key role later. But it, during the first arc, there was an instance where Sakata was helping this girl, or this little child who was lost. And then uh, Tomoe, Koga, uh, yeah, Tomoe um, she thinks that he's like a kidnapper pedophile dude. Right. So she kicks him in the ass, like literally. <laughs> and then the miss, the miss, uh, they, and then they, they, uh, uh, after the misunderstanding is clear, she's like, oh, shit. Okay, fine. Okay, I get it. Let's be even. And kick my ass, too. And then he <laughs> kicks her ass, and it's super funny. It's so <laughs> funny. But that little scene is very important, you know, because that's what caused them to be binded together. You know, quantum entanglement or whatever, you know. Right. Their fate was connected somehow, some way, um, because of some sort of random, super, super very specific phenomenon, which happened to be that, which is funny as shit. And it's because of that, and that's why, you know, the days were repeating, and he was repeating with them, you know, because he was entangled with her. And that's that whole quantum entanglement thing, right? Anyways. Um, <clears throat> Futsaba this entire time was not, like, this adolescence... I mean, she hasn't seen it for herself, you know, this whole adolescent syndrome thing. Right. She hasn't been involved in it, so she doesn't really know until it happens to her, right? And Futsaba's character is very interesting because she's this... Um, this idea is about hating oneself, one's physical self, you know, hating the, like being beings because, you know, she um, in the show, she's very, well, I guess the best way to say is uh, well developed, you know, her boobs are huge. OK. Thank you. <laughs> You know, but uh, but she hates that for herself because that's not she what she wants, you know, and it's because of that, you know, she she has to be careful what she wears because otherwise she's going to get looks from dudes and stuff like that. Right. And she doesn't feel very safe and she she hates herself. She hates that side of herself, you know, and then um, it's because of that that she creates a. Uh, I don't know if it's because of it necessarily, but she creates a social me a private social media account where she makes sure she tweets lewd stuff of herself, of her body. You know, when she talked about it and she said it was it was really just to uh, make fun of herself. But then she kept doing it and then she felt really disgusted by it. But she kept doing it. Um, and I mean, it's kind of it does play a big role. But um, to what I'm trying to get at for the arc is a little different because the main part of this arc is, of course, her her love divide between her and Kudumi, which is her crush or Kunimi rather is her crush. And Kunimi has a girlfriend, you know, and she was like, I hate myself for, you know, loving someone or why is it why am i like this and you know that type of stuff you know and that's kind of the main thing and she ends up splitting into two personalities two pe two different people yeah go ahead right random side note uh kunimi's girlfriend was an absolute bitch anyway dude it's funny as shit <laughs> you know it's I, i'm gonna show you this meme later but like in the manga it's so funny there's this meme of like her in the manga just has like huge tits so it's like they did her dirty. It's funny as shit. Because <laughs> in the anime, she does it. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> yeah, but anyways. Anyways, so, yeah. So she splits into two people and she, the uh, the outgoing side of her, you know, changes the way that she looks. She starts wearing contacts. She puts her hair up, you know, all of these different things mm -hmm. uh, to change kind of her outward appearance. And then she 
would go and watch Kunimi's basketball games and like all of that kind of stuff as well. And it was so fascinating just seeing how the same person can act so drastically different Mm -hmm. when, when they're kind of like split apart from each other. It's so interesting. It's so fascinating. And the way that they did that was so, so good. Because it's that desire, right? Yeah. It's a desire because she wants to be more. I mean, her second side wasn't. Well, I mean, then again, it was split into two. Who's to say which one's the first side, which is the second side, you know? Um, I, I, there was a really funny, a really, a really, really clever thing that Sakata said where um, one of the girl, one of the Futaba said, whose side are you on? He's like, I'm, I'm on Futaba's side. You know, <laughs> classic answer from Sakata. Classic answer. Yes. Round of applause for Sakata. And then he was such a smart ass. I love him. He that. is. Yeah, I know. Right. I love his character. <laughs> He's among the of the best main, uh, best MCs, you know, but in a way, you know, she although that second side of her was her desire for Kunimi, she still wasn't very honest. You know, she wasn't obviously like gawking over him and and all that type of stuff. But. Something about it was just like, I don't know. Even though she split, her, that that's still her, you know? And she would still never be that forward. Right. Except now, this time, she just has a different... She has a more open motivation. And she's a little more honest with herself. But she's not, she's not still just going to run open arms into Kunimi, you know? Because that's still not her personality. Right. Because at the end of the day, you know, like I said, this is a split personality. This is cutting them in half. This is not two different Futsubas. This These are both Futsuba. Together, these are Futsuba. You know? I love that you're gesturing with your middle fingers. Dude, I use my middle finger a lot. And I don't... I just... I'm so used to using... It's weird tangent. I'm used to using my middle finger. Like, when I point to stuff, I use my middle finger. You know? And it obviously, it means fuck in here in, in, in English land. But I don't ever use it as fuck. This means fuck. If I, you know what I mean? Yeah. If I gesture it, you know, that's a body language. But if I'm just like, oh, this, uh, this iPad right here, this cup right here, you know what I mean? Yeah. Which is, it's ironic that you wouldn't use the longest finger on your hand. Right. That's what I say. Oh my gosh. I say it's the longest (laughs) finger in your hand. Why don't you use it for more things? Why not? You know? Why is it just immediately fuck you? Yeah. Why? Anyways, anyways, so let's let's tangent back to the tangent that we were just on. Yeah, but another reason why Kunimi's are we're just gonna get we're just gonna uh, move on because I do really like this arc and I do wish I could talk more and I would love to two part it, but frankly nobody wants that. So Futsuba's arc and Kunimi is all about Kunimi basically, 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 and about herself and being honest with herself. And there was this really cute moment where it was like. Uh, Sakata's like, Kunimi is way more capable than you think. And it's like two in the morning and he just calls Kunimi, right? He's just like, Futaba is in danger. Get here now. And he gets there like sweating, biking, you know what I mean? Right. And it's so wholesome, you know? And it's like, (laughs) and then even when he gets there, he's like, Sakata, did you assault her? And he's like, no, I didn't assault her. And he's like, dude, you totally did. I promise I didn't, you know? And, And it's so organically wholesome. And it's like, it's just these, it's great because in a way, it's just like this three group of friends. All along, it's just three group of friends. And all these characters keep coming, introducing and stuff like that. But since high school or whatever, these three group of friends, or these three friends, this group just had this bond, you know? And it's it's like, Sakata always says, you know, I don't care if I have that many friends. I have two, in fact, and they're my friends for life, you know? Right. And it's like, that's like such a, it's so wholesome when you see this moment, you know? And they go and they light fireworks together and they go see, and then... You know, it's so wholesome. Yeah, they spend the entire night together. Literally, you know. Just because Sakata made one phone call and then that was just like Yeah. I'll be there right away. I'll be and there then, right away, you know. And then, you know, it it was just that that was really, really cool. It was great. And I know that we keep tangenting and I'm sorry, it'll be brief, I promise. <laughs> uh <laughs> but that just makes me think of the group of friends that I have mm-hmm. because you know, if I called you at like three o'clock in the morning and I was like, yo, I need help. And if, you know, if you weren't either streaming or hammered, you would. <laughs> what, what, what? What do you see? What? Uh, what? Hammered? I would never. I would never. I don't drink that. You drink more than me, frankly. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, S- but sl- asleep. Asleep. Although yeah. at this rate, I'm, I'm, I'm awake at, the rate <laughs> at this yeah. point. But no, I would be there and you would be there, too. As long as we're not just asleep, because that's just the big factor, really. Yeah. Are you asleep? Oh, shit. <laughs> um, but no, it, it it is like that. You know, the close bond of friends 
trifles all. You know, logic is thrown out the window. Common sense is thrown out the window. You know, right. And that was Futsuba's arc. I like that a lot. The sister arc now. You may think I want to brush past this, but it's very important. <laughs> like all arcs are. Because I really like this arc. In a weird way. In a We're very weird be here way. All day. We are not. <laughs> it's only been an hour, Zach. We're fine. Futaba's arc. <laughs> Wait, shit. It's the sister arc. So what is it? To- Toyahama, I think? Yeah, Toyahama Noroka. She is my sister. So basically what happens is that her, she, uh, Noroka, and my, they switch bodies. Sort of. And what happens is they like, okay, this happened or whatever. And Nodoka is freaking out. But Mai is just sitting, sitting here. Yeah, eh, it's all good. Allison syndrome happens <laughs> another day. <laughs> um, so they switch lives. And basically what gets revealed is that Nodoka is like a super, like she really loves her sister and she wants to be with her sister and she wants to be her sister. But the problem is like, she's also in the industry, like the, well, not in the industry in the same way because Mai is an actress and Nodoka is an idol. Right. And basically what happens is she keeps getting compared to her older sister. You know, the classic younger, younger, younger sibling gets compared to the older sibling, you know, been there, been there. You know, I haven't, but you know, well, frankly, I get compared to like, you know, my cousins and stuff, you know, the comparison, you know, being compared to another person, but that's not you, you know, I don't care, you know, but that's not what this is. And basically being overshadowed by, your super successful older older sibling, you know, right. and how that's like. And, you know, even Nodoka's own mom, which is their stepmom, literally their stepmom, is more interested in her step sister her, her stepdaughter, which is Mai, because she's more she's more talented talented or whatever, you know, more successful. And like, why can't you be like Mai, basically is what she's saying. Um, at least outwardly. And they switch bodies. And then Nodoka realizes how like Mai isn't just this gift to earth, like this goddess gift to earth from God himself, you know. She's a hard worker. She does a lot. And there was a lot of pressure on Mai, you know. Right. A lot of people are, ex- there's a lot of expectation of Mai. A lot. And then you see that like when uh, when Nodoka takes a commercial shoot and then she passes out from the pressure, you know. It's tough, right. Because you have this idol that you might love. Your favorite YouTuber, your favorite streamer, whatever. And you're like, I want to... Or, or maybe a little different scenario, of course. I want to be like him. You know, I want to have a job like him. But you don't see, realize, you know, when the camera is off or whatever, they're working really hard. And there's a lot of pressure on them, you know. And we talked about it before, you know. If they mess up, it's a big deal. Right. You know, if you mess up, there's a lot of pressure riding on you. If you mess up, your career can be done. I just talked about it earlier. The tri- It's trial and error. If you just make one rather one very critical error, or even a, not even that critical, one very small specific error to upset or do anything in incor- like it's just something really stupid like that i just faded out my bad <laughs> <laughs> you know you're what do you how do you how do you ride that wave right how do you stay on top and how do you outwardly portray that you're not affected by that at all right yeah and especially when you talk about um the the film industry because oh, you know yeah. time is money and if you're sitting there fumbling your lines or messing up all the time, you know, that's going to cost a lot of people a lot of money. And so when uh, when Nodoka, she was trying to do all of these commercials and all of that kind of stuff, like, I think that that was, like you said, like that eye opening moment that Mai is just a, a hard worker and she has just this mentality of of like. I got to get shit done. But when Mai was doing Nodoka's stuff, like Nodoka's schedule was completely booked like all mm-hmm. day, every day. Um, but Mai was be- was able to pull it off because she has developed that work ethic yes. from all the stuff that yes, she was yes, doing. Yes. And so I think that that was really awesome to just kind of see, but also Mai just being a badass because she is a badass. Yes, but, she is a badass. Yes. But That's at the cool. same time, uh, she was able to assume that role and was able to pull it off somehow. Yeah, because she ended up getting like the, that's that debut single that Nodoka yep. wasn't able to do, and she did really well. And she was on stage too, like laughing with her friend or with their idol members and stuff, and getting the lines right and stuff. And 
you know, when one of her idol friends like slipped or whatever and dropped the mic, she grabs it in midair. You know, it's like she she was going like, oh, man, I can't even imagine because Nodoka was there to watch it. I can't even imagine just sitting there watching someone do your job better than you. I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I mean, I honestly, frankly, I have too, since I'm doing this like streaming and stuff. But it's the big thing is that you shouldn't let that get you because she, my wasn't just some goddess that just went, just went there. All right, I'm going to fuck around and get a debut single. You know, she, she went to those dance lessons. She tried her heart, you know, she worked her ass off, you know? And it's like, and even in the very beginning of the arc when it's happening, you know, like, why she's so calm and collected when even though like we just switch bodies this is weird this is crazy you know she's like it happened what we can we're complaining is not gonna do anything let's just figure it out let's get it done let's let me show me your schedule i'll show you mine let's let's match them let's figure it out you know that's just my you know she's her worth ethic at work or her work ethic is just so strong and she just knows that you know getting nothing done is not gonna help anybody you know She's so used to this pressure that's built on her that if she if she slips, then that's going to show. So she's not going to. And, and, you know, frankly, she could have just slipped and then Nodoka would have fallen even after um, switching back for say, you know, and then now she, by comparison, is doing better than Nodoka, you know, right. but she didn't do that. And that also shows a, a bit of how, you know, she's uh, she still loves her, sis her sister. She's not. I mean, she was a little you know, reveal a little jealous or whatever. And, you know, towards the end, you realize, you know, they love each other a lot, you know, and right. Mai would not, would not dare to see Nodoka fall. So that's why Mai didn't, has, Mai wasn't hesitant. Mai wanted to make sure that Nodoka still was still doing well, even though Nodoka wasn't there. Right. You know? And that was something that I really admired about that arc in particular was that Mai was working so hard to make sure that yes. Nodoka's rep reputation was still intact after mm -hmm. everything was said and done. And obviously, you know, you're talking about two different ends of the the media scope, but, you know, she had to bust her ass and make sure that she didn't let her little sister down. Mm -hmm. And I thought that that was really cool. And that that really cemented for me how how amazing of a character mm -hmm. that Mai was during the show. Yeah, because I remember when uh, when Sakata was just walking Nodoko home in Mai's body still like. Nodoka was talking about like, you know, she, she the reason why she was there is because she got in a fight with her parents and she went to Mai's house or whatever, right? That's the reason why they connected or whatever after all this time. And like she was she was talking about they were talking about family and then they were like, Nodoka was like So I say like I've been saying like a lot. I'm sorry. I should say okay. that. You're I, totally I fine. apologize. I genuinely apologize because I hate that. Anyways, like no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> she was talking about her parents and how I, you know, I hate, or do you, oh, no, 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 what was it? She was talking to Sakata, and then she was saying, you know, how do you feel about your parents? And he was like, they're my parents. I'm like, oh, do you like them? Do you hate them? Or do you hate, do you despise them or whatever? Like, oh, I guess all of the above, you know? Yeah. And that's kind of how the parents are, you know? How your siblings are. You know, I hate them, I love them, you know, it's whatever, you know? It, it just, it's just how it goes. It's all, that's all, all of the above. That was a great answer. It's all, I, all of the above. Right. You know? That's just how you feel about them. And I love the representation of just so many different ideas and emotions and feelings that the characters have. And I love how they were able to portray it in such an organic way. And they were able to make you feel like these are actual people. You know, they have actual emotions. They're going through all of their separate things. And you know, as wacky as it sounds from an outside perspective, like, oh, they switch bodies. Oh, no. But like, you know, what would you do in that situation? You'd be like, oh, shit, we need to figure out how to maintain each other's lives before. If you can even come to that conclusion before panicking, you know? Right. And and the way that my and Nodoka dealt with this situation was like two ends of the scope. Like, Nodoka was just flipping her shit like, oh, my God, what am I going to do? What are we going to do? This is crazy. What's happening? What's happening? And then Mai was just like, well, we're here now. I guess we should probably try to figure out some type of solution to this problem. And yes. so that was really, really fascinating to watch. And it's just, oh, my gosh, dude. Like, every single arc in this show just had such a great way of just pulling you in and making you sympathize and empathize with the characters and 
understand what's going on in this weird, wacky world that's been created in front of you that's based off of reality. And they made it feel like it wasn't outside of the realm of possibility, which was really cool. It was really cool. Now, Zach, I know we really want to get into the movie, but there's one more arc. And this arc is... This arc is... Oh. Uh, it's very painful. Yeah. And it leaves a lot of questions in the air. And this is the very reason why I really want to talk about this. So, oh gosh, I need it. I don't have much water left, but. Like, so his sister, oh. it's like this little sister. Oh, his very, God. his precious, his precious little sister. This spoiler territory. Spoiler territory. I cannot talk about this arc without spoiling. So from this point on, we're talking about spoilers. This is the final arc. If you haven't been intrigued by cool things happen, weird shit happening, but logis- like logistically and backed by logic, that's what logistically would mean. <laughs> then, <laughs> then you go watch it because it's great. This final arc. Kaede, his sister. <sighs> okay. God bless her soul, dude. I just want to just protect her, dude. I just wanted to protect her. I just wanted to be happy. We all wanted her to be happy because she was just this shining light in every single episode. This character of like, oh my gosh, dude. Every single... Uh, okay, so the story, since we are going to spoil territory, I'm just going to jump right into it. The story behind Kaede is that she was being cyberbullied. And this ties into again with uh, Koga's... Yeah, Koga. Sorry. I, why do I, keep, I don't know why I keep mixing Koga and Toga, I don't know, um, with Koga's arc about high school hierarchy, although she's in middle school, about that hierarchy, about um, about keeping up with the norms and, you know, if it, it, that type of thing and how serious social media is. And that's what happened with Kaede. And that's the reason why Sakuto was so um, not reluctant or was not hesitant to help with uh, Tomoe, even though he would be lying to the whole school and stuff like that. You know, it's a big deal. I can't just pretend to be your boyfriend. I can't, you know, and that's the reason why he just helped her in general, right? Because he felt this significant connection because his sister was the similar way it was just in a similar boat rather and you know she was being cyber bullied in group texts and stuff like that like you know her own classmates telling her to die and stuff and that's scary you know right that's very scary to be you know and it got to a point where she ended up stopped going to school and what happened was she uh well what happened the adolescent syndrome, and this is the reason why Sakura is so into adolescent syndrome, right? Because it happened with her own sister, or with his own sister. And, like, she started getting, like, cuts and stuff just randomly appearing, and bruises and rashes starting to, like, appear, even though she wasn't being physically hurt or, or being physically bullied by these people. But some for some reason, she was just getting this reaction. And, and, and when I mean cuts, I mean, like, literally, like, slits and shit, you know? That right. it was just appearing out of thin air. And then, it, it, you know, and then at some point... She collapses, I think, and then she changes personalities completely. Or no, she doesn't come. She just wakes up. One day, she just wakes up and just completely flips flips personality. Or actually, not even personality. She just she forgets everything. She forgets who she is. She forgets everything about the past. She's, I mean, she can still talk and stuff and walk and all that, but she's just a completely different kind of So they take her to the hospital and they say like, oh, she's it's just some uh, what does it say a disso- dis- dissociate dissociative Dis- dissociative or disorder or something disorder like that or something like that yeah. something like that yeah and she was basically oh man this arc made me so fucking sad dude. i know dude it was, it was so sad it, it was, was so hard it was to so watch. heartbreaking and oh the ending is just so okay i'm gonna get to it but it's the it's the hardest the hardest conclusion to ever think about is the end and i'll get to it but basically like this is new kaide and um the whole thing was that Kaede like is trying to meet up to this Kaede san, whoever this Kaede san is. So when she says Kaede san, she's referring to the past Kaede, this other person that isn't her right now, you know. And she's and everybody wants her to be like that Kaede Kaede san, right? But Sakata after, and then this is where he meets with. I guess we. I feel like this was a a big elephant in the room type of thing, but that um where she, he um is down about his sister. He goes to the beach and then he encounters Shoko. Makinohara? Makinohara? Oh, fuck yeah. Hell yeah. First try. Hell Makino, yeah. Makinohara Shoko, which is a high schooler at the time. And 
she cheers him up. You know, she she listens when nobody would listen to Sakata at all. Oh, oh, we no no no. I should I should add more detail. That that mark on it, that scratch mark on his. I don't know how we haven't talked about that. My bad. At all. Sorry, my bad. That's a very very important thing. My bad. I'm so sorry. But that <laughs> huge gash. Yeah. On his chest or, or that on his torso yeah. that just appeared and bled and stuff, and he went to the 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 hospital because of it. Um. And nobody would believe him because, like, he's just saying it disappeared. Nobody's going to believe that. Nobody in reality, in the real world, with real world life concepts, would are going to believe that. They're going to believe you're mentally ill. Something happened. Or it's self-induced. Like they said, like, this is self-induced and or you're mentally ill or whatever and something like that. But he's, like, he watched it happen with his own eyes. And he's watching, and he watched Kaede get random shit happen to her, you know, and he's, he's going nuts. But the only person who would listen to his story and believe him was Shoko. And now that ended up that ended up, if anything, changing the way Sakata lives today, you know? Right. You know, he took a lot from Shoko. You know, he wanted to be that person to support someone who wouldn't listen to their stories, you know? Dude, okay. I think I don't remember if this is something that uh Shoko said during the movie or during the series, but she said My goal is to be a kinder person every day. Yeah, that was during the show. My goal, yeah. And Life is just about being, finding how to be kind or whatever. And my goal is to be a little bit more kinder than it was the next day. Yeah. And that hit me really hard in the feels. And uh, during the entire uh, Kaede arc, it just hit me so hard in the feels. Like, I think that that was one of those arcs oh, that just... There made, are so many layers to this. I mean, dude, I to cried like, like a child. Dude, Kaede's arc has so many layers. And Zach, I'm going to go through every single one. Because I need to, I need you to understand, I love Kaede and her arc and everything about her and why it was so much sadder than it, it was meant to be, you know. So thanks to Sho- thanks to Kaede, well, I mean I don't know if you want to say thanks, but it's the reason why Shoko ended up showing up, right? And oh my gosh, dude, I really want to get into the movie so bad because this the, the whole tie in is fucking crazy, dude. But, okay, but no, uh, we can't, we uh, can't, not uh, yet, Zach. Uh, we can't listen. Kaede's arc, though, like her whole thing is that she because she was so, um, like social media was basically the reason why she was not able to, uh, or why she was so scared of school and why never want to leave the house and stuff like that. And a lot of it is also because, like his brother was the only one that can be there for her. And that's why she developed this huge attachment to her brother, you know? And, oh my gosh, whenever there was things like, oh my, whenever like the phone would ring and she would like freak out, I like, my heart drops. I was like, ah, I was like, oh my gosh, dude. Like it was like, (gasps) and like, like she would literally like stop, you know? And like sometimes the music would cut and like, it was so serious now. And like, it was like, it was a heart wrenching, like, oh my, oh my, oh my fucking God. And that would happen. That would happen throughout before it even got to her arc. That would happen, you know? Yeah. And also something that, that I'm realizing with the power of hindsight is that her fear of being outside and being around strangers and like meeting new people and all of those types of things, that was something that was in the beginning of the show. Yes. And that was a theme that followed throughout the entire show. And then it was explained at the very end of the show, which I think was really smart because when you think back, or even if you watch back Mm -hmm. to those earlier episodes and you know, you're in the beginning, you're probably just thinking that she's just a a shy, shy little, little bean, you Mm -hmm. know, but in reality, there was this fear, This this genuine fear of Mm -hmm. what was going on in the outside world and like oh my gosh dude oh the checklist (laughs) oh the checklist (laughs) so basically for some context Kaede made a a checklist of things that she wanted to do with her big brother by the end of the year by the end of the year yeah and it Oh my gosh! She decided. It, it was, to, she decided to move forward. You know, she was like, "I can't stay stagnant. I want to move forward. I want to overcome whatever it is that it's, it's going to." And it's very simple stuff, like going, uh, what is it? Uh, putting on shoes or clothes that isn't just her panda suit, and going to the front door, going outside. You know that type of stuff. And then, of course, at the very end, the very final goal is to go to school. You know, go to the aquarium. Oh my gosh, dude! The aquarium scene. Or no, the zoo scene. The zoo scene. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, Go to the zoo and see the pandas. Yeah. Yeah. That scene 
or like that entire part of the episode was just so wholesome and so cute. It was great. It was great. Like, oh my gosh, dude. And then uh, Sakata gave her a, an annual pass at the zoo and okay. he was like, you can come here as much as you want. And I, and I was just yeah. sitting there like my heart was cracking like, oh my God, mm-hmm. I can't, I can't take this anymore, man. It's too wholesome. But it, and it was that same part. After that, they took the detour and they went to school. Yeah, they at went night. to school. Yeah, at they night. went to the school oh at night. Oh my gosh! You know, yeah, and it was a little cheat. And then the Kaido's like, "It's kind of cheating, but I guess I went to school. I'll make my mark it as a triangle." <laughs> so sorry, I haven't done it yet, but the I'll, the final goal will be to go to school at the at, and then during the day. And, and then the next and then it happened. Day, the next oh! day, dude. <laughs> I want to cry, Zach. I want to cry right now. I want to cry, like really, like really hard. The next day, she wakes up and she's back to her old self, and she doesn't remember what happened in the last two years. So Zach, this is a big question I've been, I've, I've been, I've been freaking out about this entire time, you know. And it's like that overlooming question that's been in, in Sakata and his family the entire time, you know. If it's what if she comes back? Because at this point, at this to- at this point in time, because you understand, right? Like for us, for us watching right now, the super shy when there's people, but super energetic when there's people she's around with, you know. She. Like, that's the Kaede that we know. But the original Kaede is not like that, you know? Right. There was a normal... There was a Kaede that lived from age zero to... What? What's middle school? Like, 10, 11-ish? You know? Right. And then now there's a Kaede that we've all known for, like... Or what the, what the people have known for, like, three or six months. Which one is the real Kaede? You know? Because everybody... Like, everybody got to know this Kaede. The happy Kaede. The Kaede that wants to go outside. The Kaede... Or the Kaede that stays inside. But the Kaede that wants to move on. The Kaede that loves her brother so much. The Kaede that loves uh, his... Uh, who loves Maya so much and everybody else. The Kaede that's so energetic and stuff. Is that Kaede? Right. She goes back and she... You know what I mean? And Sakita's like... You know, she's like, you're Kaede, right? And he's like, he's like yeah, of course I'm Kaede. And her voice sounded different. Yeah, their too. voice cha- her voice changed too. You know, just to uh, just a kind of a, a more yeah, yeah a more like a normalish more calmer voice. You know, and it's like and then her like and her dad because especially like her dad right her parent their parents is an interesting story because like because of what what happened with Kaide you know her, her mom became or their mom became like mentally ill, um, you know not being able to accept the fact or whatever. Um, and then, and then it was decided that his brother or Sakata would stay with Kaede, and then their dad would stay with their mom, you know, until everything gets figured out. And then when she finally comes back in the hospital, his dad, her dad, their dad's like crying, "Oh, you're finally back!" But it's like, was what do you like? It's at tough. what cost? At what cost? You know, yeah. because yes, she is back to the to the to the hot to the eye of someone who's known Kaede for those ten or so years versus the eye of someone who's just got to meet her for like two months, right? You know, it's so hard because when uh, when Kaede was talking about, oh, why don't you go to the zoo with like a, a girl or something? Like, why don't you go get a girlfriend and take them to the zoo? Mm-hmm. And Sakata was like, I have a girlfriend. And she was like, what? <laughs> and that just, you know, that hits you straight in the feels because she had such a great relationship with Mai. Like... Oh my gosh, like their their bond and like the way that they interacted with each other was so cute and wholesome and I loved it so much. And now I just the concept of like her not knowing who my was or like oh it just oh God. Ah! But it's all about bro the checklist. The checklist was the final thing that got her to move back to her normal self. It was the checklist that because like the, the the past Kaide, before she turned into a different personality, she was still scared to go to school as well. So what ended up happening was that this Kaide currently ended up creating a checklist to kind of overcome the things that her past Kaide was not able to overcome. And that's basically, you know, the reason why after completing almost everything besides going to school, that she was able to return back because she ended up conquering a lot of the things that was worrying Kaide, the past Kaide. Kaide san versus Kaide chan, I guess, or never called her Kaide chan. Kaide san versus Kaide, you know. Um, and when, oh my gosh, the fucking checklist, bro, the fucking checklist. Ugh! 
like it's so it's so funny you know like oh i want to I hold hands with my brother go on a date with my brother oh it's so cute it's so funny but it's but and then then it's like go to the zoo and go to school you know it's like mm. it's and so it's, it's so dark the scene the door the 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 the, the front door scene oh my god dude. i that straight up made me cry dude, I, I was ugh. bawling at the end of that scene because basically what happened was uh kind of wanted to go outside just to step outside and she was she had her arms wrapped around Sakata she was standing behind him and she had her eyes closed and uh, Sakata was like all right we're gonna take a step forward and every time they would take a step she would be like are we there are we outside and he said no you can and hear the fear. Yeah. You can feel the fear that she has. Right. You know, because it's so, it's like on paper, it's like, it's so simple. It's or so dumb. Why, why, why is this even a problem? But for her, you know, this entire time she's so scared to go outside because her big thing is that she's afraid to be judged and bullied and stuff, you know? And that's why whenever she sees a bunch of people, she's like, oh, are they looking at me? Are they thinking about me weird? You know, she's very self-conscious about that. Right. So even just being outside is enough to trigger that, that trauma. That PTSD, you know, and that's why she's so scared. And she's like, and then as she gets closer, she's like, okay, never mind, back out, back out, please. I don't want to do. I'm scared. I'm scared. And I was like, oh my god, dude, because and you really I, feel the, sorry, you really feel the, the emphasis, the, the 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 how scared she actually is about this whole thing. How powerful this uh, this fear that she has, because it's always just like, oh, she just doesn't want to go outside. She just doesn't want to go outside. She could just stay inside, but. Then as finally she's going outside, you feel like you can like you can almost feel how hard she's gripping her brother and how scared she is, how much she's crying and stuff, and how much she doesn't want to go outside. And then they finally go outside and she breaks down crying. She's like, I'm finally I did it. I did it. I did it. You know? I think the the part where uh Sakata was like, open your eyes. And she was outside already. You know, and then she just started bawling. And it was just it was just like, oh my gosh, I I could not, I could not handle it. I couldn't, I physically could not handle that just because, just for the sheer fact that like, it just, it's so terrifying to even imagine what goes on in her mind when she's outside or when she thinks about going outside yeah, because of all of the horrible things that happened to her at school, all of the horrible things that people have said to her. And, you know, I've, I've seen what that type of stuff can do to people. And it's so dark. Like it is so dark and watching her take the steps to try to overcome it is just the most satisfying thing and you know once and and she's going through the checklist she is slowly chipping away at everything and then they go to the school at night and she said tomorrow morning i want to go to school in the morning and then tomorrow morning comes and she's in the hospital right she's returned back her memories are back right it's like <sighs> <laughs> what do you <laughs> What do you say about that? How do you just, is that like, what's right? What's the good thing? What's the good ending, Zach? I what is it? Know. Is it to be the current Kaide or is it to be the last Kaide? Because the last Kaide is what every, like what Sakura and his family knew, what everybody knew, you know? That, that was the first Kaide. But, and then there's a new Kaide. But <laughs> which one is, the, what's the right answer, Zach? There is no there's right no answer. There's no right answer. Either way, you're sitting there talking about like, oh, yeah, you know, if she just relearns how to be a human being, she's never going to be the person that she once was. But if you're talking about, like, she was trying to return to her past self and she doesn't remember any of the things that happened over the last two years, you know, it, it's just like it's a double edged sword because you you want her to be the person who she used to be. But you also don't want her to forget about all of the people that she met and mm -hmm. all of the experiences that she had because like she made such great connections with such awesome people. And it's just like, fuck, dude, I don't want you to have to relearn how to like I don't want you to have to because we're one of them. We're one of the people that only know of this Kaide. Right. And but there is her family. You know? Right. Her family. That, the Kaide, before Kaide, that's, that was their Kaide. The one that they raised. You know? 
for us, we're the one that only knows the 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 new Kaide, you know, not Kaide sign. We just know Kaide, you know. Right. What is? What's the right answer? There is no right. There's answer. no right answer, and that's the worst. That's the worst answer. The fact that there's no answer because that's the hardest thing. It's just there is nothing that we can do about it. There's there's go, there's, there's going to be bittersweet no matter what. Like we want, we want both of them. There, there's no happy ending. Like it was either she continued to live life, not remembering anything that she had learned over the 10 years prior, or she goes back to where she was two years ago. And then not even two years ago. It was like only months. I think I thought it was, or it might've been two years actually. No, you may be right. But it's tough. But and this at this point, this is where Shoko san returns back. Yep. You know, during Sakura's hard times. And you know, I know this is a very long episode, but I want when we get into the movie, it'll it makes so much sense. But oh my gosh. Okay, I can't wait. But okay. She returns, right? Shoko san finally returns after all this time. Finally returns. And Oh, I guess we never mentioned, huh? How Shoko san, like the kid version. I, you know what? I will mention it during the when we talk about the movie, I guess. So Shoko san returns during Sakata after his wound opens up again or reacts again, you know? And he, this is when Kaede just comes back, you know, and Kaede becomes Kaede san again. And her dad is crying because, you know, oh my gosh, finally, finally, I missed you so much, you know? My my precious daughter, you know, is back. But Sakata has known this new Kaede for so long and has grown with this new Kaede for so long, you know. And he, that's the point where it's like, well, what was all that for, you know? What were the memories for? What was all of it for? And he goes out, he runs out of the hospital. He does this, like, the most realistic sad person run ever. It was like it so was this bad. zombie, like, flailing arms. Like, you can tell, like, his face was just, he was so. I don't know. Like, what are you? Are you gonna just like full out sprint form run? No, you're you're like, you're. He's so sad, you know. He's so, not even sad. He's so distraught about what to think about. And if at that point he's just like, I can't even. I don't even care, you know. I'm just. What I'm, I'm, am I just? Uh, nobody's looking. I don't care, you know. I don't care how stupid I look. I don't care. I'm just gonna. I'm just running out. I'm crying. I'm flailing my arms and shit, you know, because I'm just like, I'm. I'm just. I'm just so confused. I don't even know what to think right now. I don't know if I'm sad. I don't know if I'm happy. I don't know if I'm uh, I'm angry. I don't know if I'm just confused. And it is that moment where Shoko-san finally comes back. And Shoko-san brings him back home. And, oh, man. I, like, it's, it's this is the first time you see Sakata so dead. Yeah. You know? And, like, Shoko-san is, like, like, literally, like, changing him to go to the bath and stuff. And he's, like, he's just so out of it, you know? And he's in the bath, and it's like, fuck, dude. Fuck, dude. Like, our character, our boy, you know? Our homeboy. Our homie. And another thing, too, is that we've seen all of this, the shit that he's been through. Like, he was awake for three days because he didn't want to forget Mai. Mm -hmm. And he has gone through so many trials and tribulations. And at this point, this is when we see him at his absolute lowest. And that shows a lot of significance of, like, he got hit hard with this. And it is just so, it's so hard because we, as as we've watched over the course of the entire series, the way that they interacted with each other, the relationship that he had with Kaide, and just all of these people that he brought into her life and all of that stuff it's just like fuck man <laughs> I, I, I you just want everything to be wrapped up in a nice neat little bow and it, like that can't happen and that really really sucks also it really really sucks because i i gotta i gotta go to the bathroom you gotta go to the bathroom i gotta go to the bathroom really i gotta take a pull up during our show that i, I Okay, how about I wrap this up then, and you can go to the bathroom before we talk about the movie. We can... Do you want to talk about the movie as its own thing? 
No, because I think I can wrap it up pretty quick. In a way, I know this is going to be a very long episode, but... Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I don't know. I really don't know if I can do the movie in its own thing because we need the momentum that we have so far. Right. So I'm going to finish this arc and then you can take a pee-pee and then a poo-poo. A poo-poo? A poo-poo? You got to take a poo-poo. Shit, bro. Literally. And Literally. then... Yeah, and then we can go back to the movie. So basically, when Sakata is back in back at home after this whole realization with Kaide, and he's in the bath, and Shoko-san is there too, and then Shoko-san reads her diary, Kaide's diary. And it's a diary that Sakata gave Kaide back when she first kind of became um, Kaide-chan rather than Kaide-san. You know, whenever she's trying to live up to Kaide-san, but then she's so, you know... She's like even even to the point of writing her name, you know, like writing the name with the same kanji as Kaede san. Right. And then, you know, Sakata's like, you can just write in, in Kirigana. You know, because you know, you can just be yourself, you know. And then there's that whole emotional moment and whatever. And, you know, that's when the diary started. You know, and she started writing the diary and she's just reading it over. Or Shoko is just reading it to Sakata. Um and <laughs> it changes to Kaede's voice and so, oh Fuck, dude. I, oh my gosh. I cried so hard during this. During this part, basically what I'm trying to get at to keep, to TDL, TLDR it, is that even though it's sad that the Kaide that we, that we learned about and knew about is gone, you know, what she doesn't want is to be forgotten, you know? If 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 you can if if Sakata can feel this way about losing this current Kaide, then that means she did something, you know, in in their lives. She made an impression. She wasn't just Kaide san; she was Kaide, and she was able to fulfill that. And because she was Kaide, she was able to conquer these issues, this, these problems that she had, you know. And one of the big driving factors, and one of the saddest parts that we didn't really talk about, was that she there was an instance where, as she was going through this checklist, she started. Um, collapsing again and there was signs of that she might at some point regain her memory of what she did but as the checklist kept going she kept that kept happening you know and it's because of that that you know this uh, she's uh, they're in the hospital and Sakura's on the phone with her with his dad and he's saying the doctors say that her memories might come back you know and Kaide overhears this and when Kaide overhears this this is why she wants she's so desperate to finally to finish her 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 uh, her checklist, you know, because they're finally going out of school or uh, going towards the school in the morning and she's trying, but she can't make it past, you know, this, like this, like a, one of the walkways or whatever. And she's like, why, why can't I do this? I really want to, because I don't have much time left. You know, I need to get this done. And then they go to the zoo and they go to the school or whatever. And it's like, okay, I'm going to go to school in the morning. And then she turns back, you know, that whole thing. And it was this point where, you know, we're going we're, like we're figuring this out as we're going through her diary what she's thinking you know like uh i don't i no longer want to stay stagnant like what she's really thinking you know this whole time that she's not really opening up to what she's really thinking and that was that was a hard part because it's like this is what she was thinking this entire time this entire 12 or 13 episodes you know this entire time we're finally getting that reveal and then finally at that point sakata just breaks down you know and i feel like that point was the final acceptance point or it's okay, you know. I'll, I'll I'll cry one more time, and I'll I'll do my ugly cry, and that's what the show. I love the show a lot because it's, it's a lot of ugly cries, realistic ugly cries, you know. And he does his ugly cry, and and at that point they just kind of proceed forward, and they move on. By the way, I'm not being quiet because I have nothing to say. It's just because you are summing it up in a really really good way. I'm doing I, my best. I like I like the way that you're doing it. Because um, I have a lot to say, and yeah. to even to finalize it, to wrap it up in a bow, you know. After Kaide San, like she he, she reads the diary and stuff too, and she kind of like gets that and whatever, and then and then one she finally gets discharged from the hospital. And it's like, oh, what do you want to do? And it's like, I want to go to school, which was the last checklist or the last thing on the checklist. Yeah. And that was the that was <laughs> that was the final thing, you know. That was the final peg. That was like, okay. I felt like at that point it was like, okay, I'm okay with this. You know, it's sad, it's bittersweet, but you know, I'm happy for Kaide. You know, you have to be happy for her. 
it's it, it is really bittersweet. There's no right answer, but if you had to go back like this, how if she just returned back to normal and kept her rent memories, that would just be great, you know? Whatever, fine, right. that'd be great. But you need these type of things to think, you know? Because this is of what would actually happen. Maybe, I don't know. Or if it did happen. It's a thinker. You have to think about it. If it's just happy ending, oh, Kaide is back. Oh, she has her memories. Woo, happy ending. Credits roll. You don't think about it. We're not talking about that. We're not discussing. You know? You need that weirdness to just be like, ah. Oh, this is sad. <laughs> Fuck, dude. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's really hard to just come to to some type of conclusion about how you feel about the show because it's so it's so beautifully done and it's done in such a way to where you are so invested in Kaide, the one that we knew and then when she gets her memory back you just kind of are like what just happened like who who is this person now because we've only known Kaede, not Kaede-san. And so it, it's just, it's hard to accept the fact that the Kaede that we knew is no longer there. It's very sad. Yeah. But in the end, you know, I think this is this ended up being the correct path. And I think they handled it very well. I agree. I think the way they did it was really great. I think the way they made us accept the fact that that Kaede was just, you know, nothing. Well, not, no, sorry, not nothing, but it was something that impacted us greatly. But it was also the anchor to being able to overcome her fears. So to that aspect, I think it's a, it, it's a good ending. To that aspect, I think whether it's a good ending or not, they handled that ending well. Right. And to that aspect, aspect that was great. And now there was one mini arc of Bunny Girl Senpai, but it's okay. <laughs> well, it's just the ending. Oh, they ended it in an interesting way because I think the way they ended it was to prepare for a second season. So that's why they ended it like the way they did with the whole Maya thing. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, okay, if you need to take a toilet break, we'll take a toilet break and then we'll get back and then I'll wrap. We'll wrap up everything. All right, ready? Okay, we're gonna we're gonna. We're going to come back. There's going to be movie magic. We're going to come back in three, two, one. Nice. Nice. Okay. Okay. So the movie, I'm going to keep this very short and sweet, but at the same time, very dense and feel free to chime in. Okay. Wait, how about, how about we start with me and then go to you? Cause you're going to have a lot more sure. to say than I will. Sure. Okay. So the movie was so good. <laughs> it was so good. It Cause was it was, great. it was mostly based on. Shoko. Yes. And it was based on the fact that she had a version of herself who was in middle school and then she had a version of herself that was that was around college age. Mm. And you should uh, we should bring up Shoko because we never did yet at all. OK, so Shoko uh, in the show that is yeah. in the show. She was the person who uh, helped Sakuta when uh, Kaede was initially going through her. Uh, puberty syndrome or uh, adolescent was it? Yeah, yeah. puberty syndrome, adolescent syndrome. Yes. Um, and so she was the one who was trying to instill hope in Sakata. And so throughout the show, anytime that he would be going through all of these really hard times, especially with his sister, uh, Shoko would show up and just kind of be that beacon of hope for him. And then during I don't remember if this was during the show. I think it was uh, a younger version of Shoko shows up mm -hmm. uh, because Mai and Sakata were walking around and they found this girl who had a cat in a box. And she was like, I want to adopt this cat. And so basically uh, Sakata and Mai were like, we'll take care of this cat. We'll, we'll bring it in until, until you can adopt this cat. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, after a while, Sakata starts to realize, like, wait, I recognize this girl. Where do I recognize this girl? Is this girl? Well, well he recognizes her off the bat because it looks very similar. Like, it literally just looks like 
Shoko. So the way they differentiate in the show is Shoko-san is the um, the doll version. The Makinohara-san is the uh, the child. Yeah. Is how they do it. Although I feel like it should be reversed, but that's besides the point. Um, you can go ahead if you'd like to, unless you want me to go. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot. Uh, there is a and, lot. And so over the course of the show, uh, you only meet uh, Shoko-san. And then uh, Kaede ends up uh, getting all of her memories back. And then Sakata meets uh, Shoku-san again. And then the movie happens. And I want you to just go through the movie because... Me? All right. I am... You're going to... Yeah. you. That's all you, homie. Like... Okay. So... Oh man! <laughs> you're gonna lean back. Uh, yeah, you're gonna I'm make me gonna, go there. You're gonna make yep, me do it. Okay. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna. Lean I do back have a just... lot. I do have a, quite a bit to say. So we'll see. So the movie, um, but uh, Rascal does not dream of dreaming girl. Great title, by the way. So, so the titles actually represent the bl- light novels. So Dr- Rascal does not dream of a bunny girl senpai is the first novel. Rascal does not dream of um, petite double is the second. Uh, volume which would be to, uh, Koga Tomoe's and then so on and so forth and then this is the movie based on I guess shoko and this movie you will not believe how much it ties into the show it's than what so meets the good. eye no the connections I was having so many Eureka uh, light bulb moments like it was so crazy so the movie like, I, like uh, he said it was about uh Shoko, uh, Makinohara Shoko, and the truth behind that. And so basically, spoiler warning territory, if I haven't mentioned that already, I'm going to go super deep. Not necessarily of how it ends, that's not what I'm focused on. What I'm focused on is the connections and correlations that it has with Sakata and the entire show. So basically, what happens is it gets revealed that Makinohara-san, which is the middle school version, Makinohara, I will say for the middle school version, like I said, and then Shoko san for the old school or for the old for the older version. That way to differentiate. Um I forget what happens first. I think Makinohara san first, I think. So Sakta, while on taking his sister to a checkup, by the way, this is post show, so Kaide is still or Kaide is at the moment Kaide san. So he goes to checkup and then he runs into Makinohara san. So they meet, and then it's revealed that Makinohara has a heart disease because, of course, it does. Or, of course, she does. Kept always, it always has to do with fucking disease. It's always a disease. It's always some sort of disease, Zach. Every single time. But that's okay because it's, it's, it's for good plot device or for plot development, I guess. But it turns out that she's weak and she has a, um, a weak heart. And she has this homework that she has held on to since fourth grade. And it's basically so something that's interesting. And this is also ties into what I know more about Japanese culture is that for whatever fucking reason, they make you want to choose your career very soon. Like you are choose like you choose what high school you want to go to purely based on like academics in middle school. And by middle school, you should be like figuring out what it is that you want to do in life. Middle school. I mean, you can kind of play the undecided card, but that's not really how it goes there, you know. So that's why when they're in fourth grade, elementary school, they're they're sci- they're making a paper like that. Although it's a little wholesome, like some people was like, um, I want to graduate middle school and I want to be a doctor. I want to be a uh, I, uh, I want to um, I want to work at a, a, a job like my dad or whatever. And then there's one like I want to own a cake store. You know, it's super cute. And then she doesn't have anything she wants to write down because she doesn't know. And this is the root of her adolescent syndrome because she doesn't know what she wants to be. Um, when she grows up and then it finds out that she has a heart disease and blah, blah, blah. And now she's, it's, she's not going to live past middle school. So her adolescent syndrome spe- uh, stems towards her wanting to be older and experience older things. Hence the older Shoko-san, right? So this older Shoko-san, it um, ends up finally revealing herself to the people. She shows up in front on Sakusa's front door and Mai is there too, and and uh, Kaide is there, and I think it's only two. And it's really funny. It's like a funny dynamic of like her flirting with Sakta, and then Mai getting jealous, and it's like this high dynamic. It's super funny, super great, super wholesome. Um, 
But there's a reason for why Shulka was the way it was. And, you know, she, one of the things that she wanted to experience was her first love. And what ends up happening is that you find out that, okay, we're jumping a lot of hoops right now, I know, but um, we find out that Shulka san is from the future. This, or, yeah, this, this Shulka san, the adult one again, I'll rephrase that in case anybody forgot, is from the future, right? Right. And it's because she's from the future that she's came to experience a lot of things that she wasn't able to experience as a middle school or whatever, as a young person, because, you know, she has a heart disease and she's going to die. And it's also revealed that, um, jumping even more hoops, it is revealed that, or I guess I should dial it back. They have a date, Sakuten uh, and uh, Shoko-san. They have a date. They go and do things, date stuff, and then they go to this wedding res- this wedding hall, you know. And then she tries on a dress and it's, and it's great, it's wholesome, it's, she's pretty, it's a great moment. And it's revealed that you can see a scar on her chest from what is then understood to be as a successful heart transplant. So she was able to get a heart transplant. Great. It all worked out at the end, right? Until a little towards later when she realizes, when we find out that sucks his heart that's in there. So what happens is that... Did I mention spoiler warning? I think I did already. I'll do it again. What happens is that it finds out, and Maya's there too, it finds out that Sakta is going to die. On Christmas Eve, I think. On Christmas Eve. He's going to die. He's going to be involved in a terrible car accident. And what's going to happen is that um, because he signed a donor card, which was um, towards the very beginning, I forgot to mention that, there was a donor card. After he found out about Makinohara's son's kind of heart disease, he grabs a donor card, signs it. I don't know, just out of a whim or whatever, you know. Um, he signs a card. He dies from a car accident, and it's because of that that Sakta, or th- that they're able to trans- heart, uh, directly transplant Sakta's heart into Akinohara, and that's why she's able to live t- to the way she is right now. And so she becomes, once she's older, as Shoko-sen, she comes back in time and wanted to experience or wanted to be with Sakta, which ended up being her first love. Right, the one she wanted to marry, the one she wanted to date, all that type of stuff. So basically, what's happening is that she, her Allison syndrome spurs from her going back in time and wanting to spend time with Sakta, and then doing the right thing and making sure that Sakta doesn't die. So that because if Sakta doesn't die, there's no heart transplant, and she doesn't, you know, she doesn't live, you know. And that's the point of that. So. One thing that I want to mention very quick is how parallel everything is. In the beginning, or towards the beginning, when Sakuta is talking with uh, Makinohara-san, the smaller one, um, he's saying he's cheering her up because she's saying that how her, um, because of this disease, her parents are saying like yes to everything, yes, 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 yes. You can have this, you can have this, and she feels really bad about it, you know. And um, and then to cheer her up or or knock sense into her rather, Sakuta's like. Um, one of the one of my favorite uh something that one of what did I say? Uh what did he say? He said um one one line or something that someone oh, fuck, what is it? Something that someone I look up to said once that I live by is that um the three the things I love hearing the most is thank you and I love you and not sorry. You know, and th- what's cool is that and this is some weird shit, but it's cool. It's we I don't know if you figured it out, but that's what Shoko-san said. But it's because Sakata said, that's because Sakata said it to the Makinohara-san when she was younger that Shoko-san knows. That's because that, well, that's where Shoko-san got it. Because Shoko-san got it from Sakata. And Sakata is telling the Makinohara, the smaller one. That's where that came from. So everything that Shoko-san has used to cheer Sakata up, especially when he was down during... Um, during the uh, Kaede stuff, right? When he was in the beach and stuff. That's everything that Sakta has regurgitated. No, she's regurgitated everything Sakta has told Makinohara-san when she was younger. All that advice that he gave to Makinohara-san came to Shoko-san after Sakta had died in her timeline. And she came back in time to be that person that Sakta was to her. In the, his time of need, when Kaede was, you know, uh, experiencing that thing, his gash was happening and all that type of stuff, you know, that is what Shoko-san came for. Shoko-san came to uh, cheer him up. Shoko, uh, Shoko-san came to say the things that he said to her to cheer her up, you know? 
it's it's this crazy circle of life to, or not circle but this crazy cycle of just them those two being the ones to cheer each other up and that's the kind of the idea that I want to get at because a lot of the things that a lot of the advice all of the advice that Shoko-san gave to Sakta um, and a lot of the things that she wanted to do was because Sakta instilled that into Makinohara which is her current younger self in the hospital so and that, and, and of course, that's why Shoko-san came back, like I said, to experience all the things that she wanted to experience that was in that, um, that uh, what is it, that career plan thing, um, where, uh, oh, I forgot fucking mention, sorry. Um, it was getting written down randomly, like more things were getting written down on that career sheet homework thing. So like, right. I, like I want to be, I want to be married, I want to do this, I want to do that. And then more things kept getting written down, even though Maki Nohara-san, the short, uh, the smaller one, the kid one, didn't write it down. Um Although it just ended up, you know, being the things that she wanted to do. And uh, she she wanted to relive that. And she did. She went back in time to do it. That way that she can have those memories for herself. And then she would make sure that Sakurta didn't sacrifice himself so that she can live. And that's why she went back. Dude... It just, just that entire movie, like so much happened, so much happened. And like, I probably cried like three times in the hour and a half. By the way, this movie was only an hour and a half <laughs> and so much shit happened. And like, especially when we talk about the show, I tell, I would tell people like how long the show is. And I'm like, yeah, it's 13 episodes. And they're like, fucking what? You know? And we we talked about this before you know it the the momentum keeps going and it's just com- constantly going constantly moving constantly changing and that's i think that is what has gotten me so kind of intrigued and invested into shows like this because there are so many things happening and they're able to get me to react a certain way that I've never had from really anything else. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's fucking wild, dude. Like I never thought that I would, I would be absolutely bawling my eyes out while watching a movie that's based on an anime called (laughs) bunny girl senpai, bunny girl senpai. That's what I'm, that's why Asian dramas are usually about tragedy because it, it, it it brings these ideas up. And I feel like for me, I don't know if this is the this is why, but this is why I think it coming from Asian descent. Why tragedy is usually a common trope when it comes to dramas or even just anything of of some sort of uh, media, if you will. And it's that a lot of times, especially in Japan too, um, it's kind of like you imagine it. Especially us, we imagine it as this sort of euphoric world of everything is happy and everything like that. You know, right? It's this like there's no problems or whatever, but there are these problems that lie and. Oftentimes, sometimes the and this goes into another topic that I don't want to get into, but it's like why stuff like Netura and NTR stuff, which is a tag that I think I've talked about before. It's a it's a hentai tag um, where it's kind of like blackmail rape type shit. Right. And there's why these tags exist in Japanese like pornography and stuff like that. Right. Of course, it's bad. It's for stupid. And they know that very well. But the reason why it exists is because. You know, I talk, you know how, how I say about that meme of like, you know, I, I think I said this joke before about the fucking grapefruit. And it's like, listen, babe, I want to do something different, you know? Yeah. It's just they when living in a super happy, secure life, you know, quote unquote, I know I'm 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 speaking from the outsider. I know all this thing. I know it's not comes up and lollipops. I understand black companies, I understand all that type of stuff, you know. But they have you have these tropes and it's fiction, and that's the big point, right? It's fiction, it's not real. You know, but because it's there, and it just has this different stimulus, and you're like, wow, that was fucking crazy. That was fucking fucked up. That was that was mental. That was insane. Well, that was a story, and that was interesting. You know, and it's because of this type of tragedy type of storyline that it makes you think about things differently. Because, like I said before, in your lie in April, spoiler warning, you haven't seen your lie in April. If she didn't die, that would have been a boring story, right? Or it would not have been as impactful to us as it was. Like it would have just been a really cool heart lifting heart, you know, heart moment, whatever. If she stayed alive, that this move that the your line April would not be talked about. It takes these bittersweet, these tragedies to happen. 
And, you know, like I said, you know, uh, sorry, a lot of likes and you knows, but I'm trying to wrap my brain around what I'm trying to say because tragedy is something that is something that none of us want to experience, but it's something that we experience. And to see it in a form that is presented right in front of you, you can directly relate with it. Um, but not everything has to be tragedy, you know, because, but there is a lot of tragedy that happens in this movie and especially the big one, which is my jumping in to save Sakta. Oh my God, bro. When, when the car crash came, right? The car crash came. <laughs> it, bro. Like, it was time, right? It was time for Sakta to get run over. The timeline, it was there. It was ready for him to die because he was going to sacrifice himself to make sure Mike and Hara live because that's just how Sakata is. Right. You know, he cares more about others than himself. And Maya knows that very well. So she jumps in and pushes him out the way because she knows that he was going to do something like that. She was going, he was going to get into an accident. <laughs> so she jumps in and the timeline changes. And it's like, oh my God. Uh, what? Fucking dude, this the thing that messes me up the most is the fact that it was a twist that I feel like you could have anticipated, but you it, it just came out of left field so hard that yes. it was just kind of like it was it was just like holy shit, man! I did not expect this to happen. Dude, I was fucking, not. I was fucking not ready. now. What now? What dude? I when I was watching it with my friend or I'm sorry, my cousin Brandon. Uh, the one I built the computer for. Um, when I went to del deliver it that same night, I stayed. I stayed the night because at the time there was fires and shit going on. Skies are red, foggy over in the northwest, so I couldn't drive back. And we watched Bunny Girl Senpai. That was the night when we did it. I was like, "Fuck y'all!" Yeah, finally, when that happened, but we both were like, "No, no way!" It, I, I stood up. I was like, "No." You're joking. I did not expect that. You say like, I you were was saying, you, you were bowling. I, I you oh my god you can say like uh, I don't know for me I was not expecting that I was not ready for that I was I was like something's gonna happen what is gonna happen I don't know what's gonna happen as soon as she jumped for I was like no we were like no uh, but oh sorry my bad my bad that was that's how I sounded terrible um oh, what am I yep okay there we go this is why we can't have nice <laughs> so. In the beginning, towards the movie, or in the beginning ish, towards the movie, Maya's like, I love him more than you, th I love you more than you think. And this was the greatest example, you know, because just before that, Maya was like, please don't sacrifice yourself. Please don't. Like, she was taking Sakta super far away so that there would be, there'd be no chance for him to get in some sort of accident or whatever. Um, and they had this moment and it sucked, you know, but at that time, it happened. Maya dies instead in this timeline. And then the uh, Sakata, of course, loses it, you know, and uh, I can't, dude, I can't. I don't know why, but it, it's just like I can't on a scale of one to even. I can't. <laughs> it's like fu it, it fucked me up so bad. And then to be able to get some type of resolution at the end of it like oh my god dude mm -hmm. it was fucking insane mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and this was like near the end of the movie and so like you're you're sitting there thinking like no not really even if this was, was like it? at the hour mark so it was like 30 minutes left or something like that dude it felt like the movie was gonna that's end. what i was saying no and the movie could have at any point like, like, just like Josie, the movie could have just ended at any point, but it didn't. It just kept going. It's crazy. It's an hour and 30 minutes. It, our podcast is, this episode is longer than that. Blah! Also, I'm just lounging. I know. It's okay. It's like, I can't. Whatever. Fuck your, your camera angle. Whatever. I don't, dude. yeah. Your rule of thirds. I don't care. I'm, I'm at the bottom third now. <laughs> the, and then of course it, um. So I, I'm not, I don't mean, to, I'm not here to sit here and break down the fucking movie. Go watch the movie. But then it gets revealed that Shokasan finally, uh, or, uh, um, when all hope is lost, Sokotakata is just crying super hard. Why couldn't it be me? All that type of stuff in the beach. Shokasan comes back. She appears and then Sokotakata's like, what? You should be dead. I'm like, nope. 
I got my I have my heart Mai's heart now because my at the same time you signed it she also signed for a donor card and now time is of the essence we're going to save Mai and Shoko-san is willing to sacrifice herself yes this time yeah this time she's like or because this is a huge thing of Sakata's like uh, I want to help as much people as I can I really do but I want my son to be alive, so I can't help you, Shoko. I can't help you. I, you... I can't help you. I can't. I want my son to live. I want us to live together. I want to be happy. And, you know, this happens, and then Shoko's like, I knew, yep, I knew that. And then she cries, and, you know, it's all sad or whatever. And then... They find a way to go back. Well, not then. It's kind of I'm going kind of going all over the place, but basically what happens is some sort of quantum physics type bullshit, right? Another explanation like that. Time shifts and all that. Not bullshit. Sorry, it's really cool. <laughs> um, she says you are going to go back in time and you're going to fix this. You are going to do whatever it takes or whatever the fuck it is, right? Um, he goes back in time. He shows up and nobody can see him. Or no, no, what does it say? Shoko says, find someone who can find you. He wakes up in the past, however long it is. um, I think four days, I think he said. um, And he dons what Mai does. uh, No, but he can't be seen. He's just like what Mai in the beginning of the show. He can't be seen. Nobody, his existence is not observed. So he needs to be observed. And then he puts on his own bunny suit. He puts on a bunny suit, Yes. (laughs) <laughs> not as cute but it was a not bunny quite suit. as cute but it was a bunny suit and he puts on a bunny suit he's going around and he's you know it's really interesting because it's like it kind of has this uh um oh sorry it has this uh tie back to Maya and how probably she felt you know because he was freaking out too he was like please why can't you see me please somebody see me you know and he's freaking out and he's he's panicking and stuff and he's like wow my my went through my probably went through that no she did went go she eh, she did go through that you know so that, that was another callback, and that was kind of a, a pretty crazy, like, holy shit, you know, holy shit moment. And then when all hope, is, almost all hope is lost, he finds Koga. <laughs> She's like, what the fuck are you doing, somebody? <laughs> it's that, yeah, it had to be her, of course, because of the quantum entanglement. It had to be her. You know, and, and what do you say? He's like thank God I kicked your butt <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> I wish I, thank God I had a Kohai that I kicked, I kicked a butt or some shit like that. That's so funny. It's great. But now he's finally observed. He's back in the real world. Um, and this is very important because this type, this whole being observed thing, this whole being observed thing is a very important part of the entire show. You know, you know, like it's, it's this conscience type of thing. Like that's another, God, don't do it, Arthur. Don't do it. I'm doing it conscience right how one really cool idea that Fusaba said like how can you how can the human body not see something directly in front of you well you can zone out right you know if you don't acknowledge it if you don't acknowledge its its existence it won't be there right because the brain only sees what it wants to see so once he's finally observed then he's finally be able to be seen because he's been observed in this timeline or whatever right and then he goes he finds my he 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 uh what is it he tells him he they have the, their moment mai is prepared to go to sakata to sacrifice herself and then this future sakata um is trying hard to not you know be like my fuck off. don't do it don't do it please i i'm not going to jump i'm not going to sacrifice myself my don't sacrifice yourself i've made up my mind we're going to let makino uh my my uh, Hara die right um, and then there's this moment, and it's all that. And then he goes. <laughs> he meets up with Shoko-san from that timeline because technically he's back in the timeline where Shoko-san exists because another Sakata exists. I guess I, sh- I probably should mention that, right? Sakata still exists. This is the same timeline like a couple of days ago when he's about to sacrifice himself. Right. Right. So he's in that same mindset. He gets in contact with them through Tomoe. Um, and he tries to tell him, Sakata, don't do it. I want to live with my, I love my, don't sacrifice yourself. Makunahara has to die. 
of course, Sakta being in that mindset at the time, he doesn't understand Mai is going to die. And he's like, oh, I don't care. I will sacrifice myself. He doesn't get that Mai is going to sacrifice herself for that. You know, so he's still going to run in traffic light himself. Traffic light himself? In traffic accident himself. So current or future, future, um, future Sakta. I'm sorry. I know this is very drawn out, but it's very interesting. Future Sakta finally goes and sees Shoko-san of that timeline because she, of course, still exists at that moment. So she sees, and then Shoko's like, uh, you're from the future, aren't you? And then he's like, yeah, I am. And then, you know, can we hold hands? Sure. And it's really cute. And then it's like, I'm going to, uh, I know what I'm going to do, blah, 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 all that type of stuff. And then, and then he, uh, and then he explains it. He explains what his plan is. He says, me, the socket of the current time, oh, quantum physics is very scary. And it cannot be, it cannot be messed with. If Sakata from the current time sees future Sakata, there's going to be an issue. Right. Hence the hence the reason why he's wearing why, a bunny suit. Why he's wearing a bunny suit, exactly. Because yeah. if I put on a bunny suit, you don't know who he is. Nobody's observed him. At least, at least, well, rather, Sakata hasn't observed him. So if nobody who's been in contact with Sakata at the time, or if the people in contact with past Sakata or present Sakata. God, this is getting confusing for me. <laughs> if the people in contact with present Sakata have not observed has not observed the existence of future Sakata in the bunny suit, then the future Sakata of the bunny suit does not exist technically. Right. Or not technically, but brainly, logically, you know, practically. Mentally. Um, yeah. Mentally. It doesn't exist. Schrodinger's cat. If so Schrodinger. Schrodinger's dong. So he Sakata, as planned runs in, and then Carr goes tunneling through. This time, Mai understands what Sakata's plan is because they're great and they, they can function together, you know? Mai doesn't jump in. This time, Bunny Suit Sakata, future Sakata, jumps in. Pushes them out of the way. Bunny Suit gets smacked. Bunny Suit dies. But he doesn't die because the Bunny Suit didn't exist in that timeline. Well, the the bunny suit existed in that time. Well, the bunny suit existed in that time, but he didn't. The person residing in the bunny suit did not exist. Yeah, it's that's so crazy. I just because it, I, on I paper when like, I'm explaining it, it makes no fucking sense. But when you're watching and you're like, oh, because that's just how the brain works. These type of ideas of observation and existence and verification. Is not a thing that makes sense in the practical world because if, like, you're here right now, right? You're obviously right there, but how can you be not there? I can't explain that. How and in what way can you not be there? I can't explain that. But if I use these type of theories, then it makes sense why you could not be there. Maybe I'd never seen you show up at some point at any time. I don't know, but I, I can't really bring up a good analogy because it's so fucking perfect. But that's basically the idea. And it happens, but Sakata in the bunny suit disappears because he never existed to begin with. Sakata is alive, my son is alive, you know? And, and Shoko-san. Shoko-san is, is no longer gone. a thing because she's yeah. gone because Maki Nohara san is, pre is sent to die. Because... The scene with Sakata and... Uh, I do not know how to say her last name. Uh, young Shoko-san. Yeah, Makinara Maki Shoko-san. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Makinara. Makinara. The, the, young, the young one, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, when she's in the, the... When she's in the hospital, yeah. yeah. Like, on her deathbed. Like, that was so fucking sad. And sh the fact that she knew about it all along, like, she knew what was happening. She knew that the things that she said that she dreamt about actually happened. And just all mm -hmm. of that shit is just like, fuck, man. It's the dreams. It's the memories, it's dude. It's the memories, that's yeah. A, that's the... That's that's the ent entanglement that ended up being because during the timeline when Sakuta did die, or, or didn't when Mai died, right? Futsupa was like, I had a dream that you died in a car accident, and and uh, and 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 what? Uh, uh, Noroka had a dream that Mai died in the car accident, so there were all these dreams were connected to um, these past and present events. So that was really cool, and it was because of that that Makunohara had a dream where it was like, oh yeah, I had a dream. That I was old, my older self. I was a high school version of myself, and I had it. And I had a date with you. And I tried on a wedding dress, and all the things that happened. I was like, fuck, 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 fuck. You know, right? 
And then, it's it. Oh my gosh, dude! Like I'm, I am lounging so hard right now, <laughs> uh, and that's just that's just because it's like there's there's so much to so much to unpack, so yeah. much to think about, and like even while we're talking about it, like you know, it still hasn't all set in yet. It's like. <laughs> It will set in during the rewatch. Yeah, it will, <laughs> when it'll, you, whenever you rewatch yeah. it, it'll happen. I don't see the, the hard part is that like I want to rewatch it so bad just so I but can you, see all the little stuff, but I don't want to go through that emotional yet. journey again. It, no, it, you need to digest it still. Yeah, it, you it's like it's you need like to come up with the, your own conclusions first, and then you rewatch it to reaffirm. But towards the end, it's okay because. When after right after that scene when she's in when she goes back to sleep luckily <laughs> on her bed right he Sakata meets up with Mai in her in uh, Makinohara's previous hospital room um, and shows the paper the career form paper the career the career paper and it's filled out all the way all the things that she wants to do and then Mai says I can only think of one thing to do and Sakata's like yeah he takes a red pencil and marks it so that flower mark I don't. I think that's that, that's a mark in el, like elementary schools to say like good job like all done correct you know 100%. Yeah. So he graded her paper. The paper that Makinohara was not able to complete, you know. So he did it and I think that was the corner the stepping the cornerstone the stepping stone or whatever you want to call it of the puberty syndrome closing. It's gone. It's gone. It closed. That was it because that the like I said the puberty system stamp or the Puberty syndrome stemmed for Makinohara because she couldn't fill out that paper. She couldn't complete the assignment. So she that assignment has never been complete. She completed it. Mar- it got marked down as 100%. And then they go back. It's so wild. They Be- go back in time. All the way back into fourth grade. When yep. Shoko-san... Because in the beginning of the movie, she was like pre- uh, preemptively like, no, I can't. I, she's writing. She's filling out that paper, fourth grade, Shoko san, and she's just like, uh, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I'm scared. I don't know how to fill it out. I don't know what to fill out. And then this time now, she's filled it out, and she says, "Teacher, I'm done." Right. And then that, from that point, all the way from that point, time begins to move again, and then we're back to where we are, into the present. You know. And then they're saying, you know, and then again, they had these weird dreams and these weird tendencies. Like, I feel like, like Mai said, like in the the poster, I don't know if you caught it, but it was a poster about a movie that she starred in about a girl who got a heart transplant. So a similar story. And she was like, um, I felt I, for some reason, I just felt like I should take this leading role, you know, and all that type of stuff. Right. And then, although in this timeline, they, them and Shoko, or Makinha rather haven't met, you know, because there was no Shoko-san to help Sakata during Kaide. And then and then uh Mai and, and Sakata are <laughs> on the beach and then they see fucking oh my god. Oh my god, dude, that entire fucking scene just absolutely destroyed me at the very <laughs> end where they saw uh Makinohara uh on the beach with her parents it was just like uh yeah and then and then there's like Mai's like do you know her and, and then Sakura's like no and you're like no <laughs> you know her come on and then it, and then and then what, something happened i don't know i think there was a trigger or something or he just walked by i don't know and then a trigger happens and then he remembers again and he's then or whether he remembers or not he just random he just says it right out of out of uh instinct Right. Calls out to her, Makinohara san. And the Makinohara stops and she's like, Sakata, you know? And it's like, ah. Oh. It was so good. It was so, so good. And like, I could sit here and talk for another hour and a half about this, like the movie and the show and like all of the. All of the things. Man, I'm gonna do it in the stream. I already did it. I'll keep. I'll do it in the stream. This is all good. If you want, if you want to know more, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Follow me on Twitch. No, but by the time you see this, episode, go to. A, by the time you see this stream, episode, my that that stream, happened. I would have. Yeah, it would have already happened. That vod is gone. But no, I do want to wrap it up because we've been talking for a long time. Whether you stayed here for this long, I'm surprised. But 
I do have a lot to talk about. And honestly, if you want me to go into more, I'm totally down to go into it again because there is still so much more to unpack, especially with the movie, especially how it correlates with everything, with Sakta during the show, why Makinohara did what she did, why she knows what she did. You know, it's so crazy. The timeline, the timelines, they connect. The time shift. Time shifts. It's all the time shifts, Zach. By the way, have we ever addressed the time I shifts? I think we have in an episode. Hopefully it wasn't scrapped. I can address it again. In this very room, time shifts happen. Like, we will literally not touch anything on the set, any cameras or anything. And then we'll come back the next week and something will be different. We don't know what it the is. The angle is slightly different. Yep. The camera is not high enough. It's not low enough anymore. Something changes. Even though I never touch it. I'm in this room a lot, but I don't. I usually will not touch. If I do touch it, I'm aware I touch it. You know, And then I can say, okay, yeah. I touched it. This is why this angle right now is weird. But no, sometimes it just changes. The time shift. Ti the time shift the, in this room. It just changes. I mean, we were talking about before this episode started, like uh, the uh, the weird thing where we could hear our voices through the headphones. Oh, yeah, that's right. And we demonstrated that in the last episode. Yeah. But now. Did you hear that? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Did you not hear that? I could I could hear it like in, no, in the No, I room. mean can you hear that no. as if there was like like before, like a mic just right in here. No. Exactly. It's gone. It stopped. Time shift. Time shift. Or the Chinese figured it out and they, they, they realized that we figured it out and they turned off their mics. Time shift. Time shift. No, we'll just go with the time shift. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's I all think, I have to say. I think that that's all that we're going to have time for have time for listen today. just watch bunny girl senpai i don't care what anybody says because bunny girl senpai is one of those so here's the thing about any twitter anime twitter western anime twitter for um, specifically and this is a whole topic for another time but i'll give it a brief a brief synopsis it's toxic as shit it's one-sided it's waifu wars if you don't like it's they're broken into factions and if you are if you don't like this character or this show, then you are stupid and you are a degen and you should die. Is how that works. And <laughs> that's how anti Twitter works, as far as I'm concerned. And basically, Bunny Girl Senpai was one of the shows that everybody loved so much that Western anime Twitter was like, you know what? Everybody loved this. I'm just going to hate it because I'm cool. Hmm. It was one of those shows. Dude, so it was like, do okay. I could, and then every every week, Bunny Girl Senpai shows up, and then they're just like, uh, everyone's talking about Bunny Girl Senpai again. You know, it's like, oh, let's just water down Bakuman Agatsuri or whatever. You don't know what that show is, but I'm just like, what the fuck is wrong with you, <laughs> dude? It was so funny when I was when I was doing the the little bit of research about Bunny Girl Senpai uh, before the episode, I saw a bunch of just negative reviews. Just for no reason. They're like, I don't know how you guys like this show so much. Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, I like this show because it's fucking good. And you know what? You get cultured. Listen, uh, dude, you could not like the show. You could not. It's fine. Yeah. But, you can. It's don't. Why? Why do you have to let everybody know? Why do you have to let all your followers know and let and make this public statement that I hate this show? But you can't hate the show just because other people like it like exactly that's like what I'm that's saying. that's not cool and it's like, like i can totally see how some someone might not enjoy this stuff that's fine you know you can not enjoy the things you don't want to enjoy it's right. fine but that's just how twitter that, that's why i don't follow anybody from western anime twitter that's why i only follow japanese people and then my good friends um although uh you know i don't i can't at least in my experience so far following japanese people has been a lot easier as far or a lot more not as toxic i think all the toxic stuff goes into like 2chan which is like japanese 4chan apparently um but otherwise as far as twitter goes it's usually pretty supportive in that way what happened to all the other two chans i don't know because shut up no Sh shut up Okay, I think I think it's time. I think it's time to end it. But yeah, um, it's a good show. It's a great show. It's a great show. If you want to watch it, and then you watch it and you don't like it, it's all good. But it's a thinker. It's a really big thinker. And honestly, if you want, I this is a show you, you can watch with other people. You can watch with a friend, so then you can just talk about it. Because this is a show that you want to talk about. 
I could watch Bunny Girl Senpai while it was airing in 2018. And I was fine with watching it alone because I had people to talk to it about. Because there's so much that happens that you just want to discuss. This is a discussion show. You know, it's a show that just raises a bunch of questions. And a lot of the questions I... Or it's not a lot. Some of the questions were talked about here. And like I said, I mean, this is a... We're going on longer than the July and April episode, Zach. Which was double the length. Yup. You know, this is a thinker show. So if you would like to think, grab a buddy and think together and talk together and discuss together. Even if you don't like anime, man, this is second on the flow chart. So I could recommend this first if I wanted to. Yeah, and I'm I'm honestly glad. I'm glad that I watched it in the order that I did, just for the sheer fact that I I had a lot more appreciation for uh, the different elements that were in the show because I've had a little bit of previous experience, but sure. Uh, sure. Yeah. I definitely am going to have all of the people in my life who want to get into anime. I want them to watch this show because it's a fucking banger. And, and not only is it a banger, but it's also something that you can just sit down and have a conversation yeah. with somebody about. Honestly, d- go watch it with your dad <laughs> or just ask him like, Hey, you don't have to if you don't want to. But you want to watch this and, I don't know, just talk about it? Yeah, because, I mean... I don't know. I mean, you don't have to, of course. And, or, and he doesn't... And he could just say no and be like, all right. All right, bet. I bet. But I don't know. It, it sounded like he was at least intrigued by the ideas. Right. So, I mean, and if you watch Dragon Ball Z with you guys at some point, then he's probably not absurdly offended by um, all things created by Japanese people, apparently. So, I don't know. Yeah, who knows? I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? Um, but okay, I'm tired. We're gonna end it's it tired. here. But Zach, I have <laughs> one final question for you, which of which I praise, uh, of which I propose in the beginning. Who is your favorite girl? <sighs> Kaede. Oh! Oh! And then everybody clapped. Credits, credits, and the credit and credits roll. <laughs> love that love that you heard it first zach is cultured <laughs> okay now then that is best i'm honestly i agree with you that just is best girl but i don't know if you can waifu her because she's a minor so <laughs> who is who would be your waifu oh god uh Well, I mean, you can waifu. Okay, here, okay. Let me differentiate. Waifu doesn't mean the character that you want to have sex with. I feel like that's a common misconstruction. Like, if I have a like, for example, if you said your waifu was Kai, your waifu can be Kaide, if you want. That's fine. If you just said best girl was Kaide, then fine. Then I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying your waifu can be Kaide. It's all good. I mean, it's just your favorite girl. Yeah, it's all good. I mean, would it still be Kaide? <sighs> just, okay, it's so hard because. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making them. Th- <laughs> it's so hard. We're talking about anime waifus. <laughs> it, would, it would probably be uh, uh, my son. Yep. Okay. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Yep. All right. Well, you heard it here first. Zach has a best girl. Cause she, yeah. I mean, is that yeah. best girl of all time out of all the five shows we've watched? Four. That's really that. That's the hard part because, oh. like, well, Zach, how do you think I feel? <laughs> <laughs> Although I already have a number one girl already, because I've just decided that and I've ro- I've rode that train. But um, when you you can have listen, you can have best your for number one favorite girl, and it's fine. Clo- number two can be close second. Yeah. Let's hear it. The people want to know. The people want to know. Who is Zach's number one waifu after watching four shows? It can change still. It could change still. But who is Zach's number one waifu? Kaori from... It had to be. <laughs> it had to be, of course. That everybody knew. Everybody, everybody knew. Everybody knew because that, <laughs> that was like the show that hit me the hardest personally. And so like I had, I had to. And I mean, you know. Of course. Of course. But for this show. For this show. For this show. Is it Kaide? Or is it my? Kaede, probably. All right. <laughs> Honestly, I'm down. I'm great. I'm great. All of them would have been great answers. 
They're all they're all really great characters. They're all really and great girls. They're all great characters. Yes, character is the best way. But for me, your boy, um, I was Team Rio Flutsaba. I still am. I still think that her character is fantastic. But after rewatching, I don't know, man. <laughs> Koka just kind of grew on me. I don't know. Oh, sorry. Just watching it, I, I don't know. She, I just kind of like liked her. <laughs> I don't know, dude. Her it, character just grew on me. Yeah. I don't know. They're all really great characters, and so trying to pick one person as like the oh, best yeah. character is just impossible. But anyways, anyways, that's anyways. gonna be it. I, that's gonna be it for us. Thank you guys for staying. If you did somehow, some way throughout the entire show, um, watch Money Go Senpai if you haven't. I feel like we didn't really, exp- uh, we didn't really spoil as much as we thought we did. Of course, we still said spoilers, including like series, the series, the ending to the series. But I still think you should watch it because it's really a thinker. And don't, you need to watch it twice. Because the first time, like I said, Bunny Girls and Mike, there's just so much that happens. And there's, and the pacing is something like Josie, like we explained earlier, it's kind of like a calmer pace, but it just keeps moving. So it's, it's quick. Right. Like things just keep happening. Right. So a lot happens. And there's a lot to take in. So watch that the first time. Cry a bunch of shit. And then there you go. There's your, your great first watch. Second watch. Now that you already know what's going to happen. Carefully think about what everybody says. Think about the theories that Futaba says. Think about why Shoko did what she did. Think about why Kaede did what she did. You know, all that type of stuff. Because there's so much more to it, you know. So... Give it a give it one watch if you haven't already. Wait like a month or two. Watch it again. So yeah, Bunny Girl Senpai. It was a great show. Next is Demon Slayer. Yes, we. I'm getting. I'm. I'm. I'm doing the opposite of what normal people do. I'm making him watch the mainstream last. Yes. Normie anime, normie anime. Let's go. <laughs> I'm super pumped. You're gonna love it. It's gonna be a different change of pace because so far we've had a lot of like thinker episodes. Thinky up there are thinky. You know, like, I mean, No Game, No Life, uh, I still think uh, considered a thinky show. This is just no Demon Slayer. I mean, it's still thinky in ways, and the, t- and the themes are really, you know, cool. But it's just a fun show. <laughs> it's a fun show to watch, you know? Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. So it's going to be a different change of pace, and I'm excited. And man, listen, I'm going to check back with you guys. You know, it won't be next week or whatever. It'll be a while. But when we get to that one episode, the episode that we all know what we're talking, you know what I'm talking about when I say that episode. Oh man, I just want Zach to just speak during whenever we get to that the our unet episode, the Demon Slayer unet episode of talking about Demon Slayer. When we talk about this Demon Slayer episode, I just want you to talk about it because I'm just ex- I'm so curious to see what you have to say about it. And Zach, you maybe you're you're sitting here like, "Hi, uh, my name is Zach, and I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what you're talking about." Um, you're going to know when we get to that episode. You're going to know. That's all I'm going to say. You're going to know. It's that crazy. But yeah, I'm super excited because I haven't rewatched it in forever. I watched it once and I didn't even finish it. <laughs> I got to like episode 20. But to be fair, after like episode 20, I kind of just like, it's just preparation for the next season. So, or it's movie for that matter, which we'll watch movie as well. But yeah, Demon Slayer is next. Hell yeah. All right. All right. Well, that's all for us. As always, uh, subscribe to the smash button and the like button and the smash button. Um, co- coffee if you, in the description if you want to support regularly. I do have a Patreon set up. Did I say that yet? No. I have not said that yet. I set up a Patreon. If I did, if I did already, I did set up a Patreon. By the time this episode is up, it should be uh, it should be ready. So there's a way to do where there's a um there's a basically if you don't want to just do directly coffee, there is a just a one dollar I think I set donation if you just want to do a dollar a month just to soft support us it mean it just mean a ton if you'd like to of course you don't have to um, and then there's some more tiers to un- unlock other bonuses such as bonus episodes behind the scenes um uh oh of course early access episodes episodes with no ads etc cetera, etc cetera, right higher quality audio recordings because the way um spotify works is that i have to use mp3 you know what mp3 is it's compressed and you don't probably don't want that you want that super silky smooth dot wav uncompressed goodness Probably. Yeah. I mean, I hope you do. I mean, you might not. Of course, it's all good. Um, although, I mean, it doesn't matter if you're just listening to with your with your six dollar head your buds. But you know, it's all good with your Apple dirty buds. <laughs> but yeah, that's a thing. And then there's also another tier. So if you're curious, um, patreoncom slash uneded podcast. Uh, patreoncom slash uneded podcast. Also, you yeah. will get your name 
Oh, that's scroll right. You can, oh, the, scroll, thing, yeah. the names are going to be scrolled through. If by the time you watch this, it'll prop. It might already. Ha- well, actually, no. By the time you see this, the next episode, it'll ha- it'll start to happen. So if you want to see it, you know, like, well, thank for thanks for Patreon. You know that type of stuff. If you're if you're down with that, of course, all voluntary, of course. Um, and then of course we have a Spotify. Like I said, we have a Spotify now. Yeah. Un- ed- uh, bitly dot uh, no bit.ly slash uned Spotify. Also link in the description if you're an audio listener. Shout out to the audio listeners. Um, I say we have a Spotify now, but by the time you see this, it would have been like months since the Spotify has been launched. <laughs> but yeah, we do. I man, it actually took. It was hard to. I know. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> it was hard to find out how to set up. But once you find, once I found out how to set up and what, um, how what way to go about it, then it was easy. But the problem is that it was hard to figure out how it worked. But when you did figure it out, it ended up working. But I'm not going to get an Apple Apple podcast because that's a fucking... I don't know why it's so difficult to do, but it's super difficult to fucking do. Fuck you. Um, yeah. Yeah, fuck you. Apple. Tim Apple. Make it easier. Yeah, make it easier. I just want to upload it. <laughs> Tim, Fuck you, Tim Apple, with my iPad Pro and my iPhone. And your iMac sitting my in the background. IMac, my, oh, I forgot to turn the iMac on for the picture. No! Shit. We were not prepared for this episode, even though we were very Fuck. prepared. I was so ready. I was just so ready to talk about Bunny Girl Senpai, man. All right, whatever. Well, pretend, I, you know, I'll, I'll just edit it. No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> just pretend there was something there. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening to the ending tangent. Love um, you guys. Zach, do you have anything to say to the people? Do you have any, any life-changing messages to the people? Do you have anything to uh, say that we're going to change a 12-year-old's life? Uh, who is never uh, he's never gonna make another mistake in his life because you said this. This is your advice, Zach. This is your time. I'm gonna put my mic away and I want you. This is your time. This is the Zach, this is your segment. Zach's advice. And I want you to just take it from me. I'm not gonna say anything. I'm, my mic is I'm gonna move my mic away from my face. Because I've I've talked for the majority of this episode. What do you have to say to the people, to the children, to the next generation? To humankind, to mankind, to womankind, to people kind, to space and beyond. What do you have to say? Uh, if, uh, if there's anything that you guys would like for us to talk about during the show, Arthur's just awkwardly sitting far away. It's really, really unnerving. He's gone. Uh, <laughs> uh, so if if you guys want us to talk about anything uh, let us know in the comment section below and uh, I really am grateful for all of the opportunities that you guys have given us also uh, if anyone's giving you shit about watching anime fuck them dude who gives a shit you're, you're just enjoying your sweet fucking gold mine of, of content that you will find on the other side of the planet so uh, f- tell them if, if anyone's giving you shit about about watching anime. Tell them to suck my titties and go to hell. I love you guys' faces. I appreciate you all. And uh, Arthur's nowhere to be found. I think he died. Uh, yeah. Peace and j- chicken grease. I love your face. I'll see you next time.